This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, is my co-host, Nick Mason. I'm here. What's going on? Just podcasts. You? Just, just podcasts? That's all I do. All day, every day. Oh, yeah. How are you feeling about that? I record several, but I only release the one. So you can imagine how good the other ones are. Worse? No, they're much better. But they're just for me. Oh, is this like a Prince, Prince's Vault situation? Exactly. Where he, record, he recorded many <laughs> albums and, and videos and stuff that never saw the that's light right. of day. That's, that's how I spend my day. Have, have you heard Kevin Smith's Prince story? I I'm have. Sure you have, right? Yeah, where he went and filmed a documentary for him for free yeah, or Prin- something. Prince, Prince invited, Prince had seen Dogma, yeah. his movie Dogma, and he was about to release an album that covered, apparent, according to Prince, thim- similar themes of like religion and whatever. And then he invited Kevin Smith to, to film like a, a listening party with all these super fans and stuff. Yeah. And then it was like this absolute nightmare for Kevin Smith. And at one point he ran out of film because this was in like fi- the film days, but he's just like faking still filming <laughs> this thing. And then at the end he's, he's handing over all the films and and he's, he asked one of Prince's handlers, he's like, when's this going to come out? And they're like, it's never going to come out. <laughs> it's just for Prince. That's what's happening here is you're doing this for Prince. For free. For free. I, maybe, I don't know, maybe they paid him. I don't know. I don't, think he did. I don't think he did, according to the story. Anyway, he's dead, so he can't speak ill of him. That's true. So for, for all, like all parties involved, apparently very happy with the outcome. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of all parties involved being very happy with the outcome, Mason. Yes. There was a recent live show we were a part of. All parties very happy with the outcome. Correct. Mm-hmm. Except for some audience members, I assume. You know, people who drag their partners who don't understand what's Oh, my what's God. There, there was a couple in the front row, I think. My faves. Some of my faves. <laughs> so uh, it was... Well, I would recommend that. If, you, <laughs> if you're coming to a live show, one of, of anyone, really, yeah. and you've got a partner who's absolutely not interested... Sit in the front, I reckon. In the front, yeah, exactly. Mm. So it was um, it was Sandspans organised. It was That's a right. fundraiser. It was Sandspans v Planet Broadcasting. Yep. All the greats were there. Not all the greats, but a lot of the greats were there. All the greats were there. And we wouldn't let them on. We wanted to go on stage <laughs> instead. <laughs> That's right. The greats? No, no. That's not who yeah. we're interested in having on board. And the good thing is uh, there was, last I saw, it was $3,000 raised for tickets uh, sold. That's for pretty great. Appeal, but it's also, you can actually donate to it. I'll link it below. The live show is there. You can just watch it. Oh, it's on a stream, right? It's it is sort of on Twitch-based stream. Uh, no, Sandman's Facebook page. Cool. But look, if you could chip in some bucks for the bushfire relief, yes, a lot of the fires are, are under control, but there is obviously massive blowback, like in the animal kingdom and other kingdoms. Mm. The kingdom of Australia. The kingdom of Amalur. That's the, a RPG. Of yes, sort, apparently yeah. it's very good. I've heard that too. It won't be getting a sequel. Yep. But that's the world we live in, isn't it? That's right. Bushfires and video game cancellations. <laughs> My God, we're in the worst possible timeline. <laughs> I anyway, like it. There's a lot of show as well. We did. Yeah. Uh, for, for people interested, if this, this give you a little tease, it was uh, a plumbing the Death Star show to start off with. It was us and the uh, plumbing the Death Star boys. We were discussing what MCU movie we could seamlessly insert ourselves into. Yes. With I think hilarious results. Hilarious, results. hilarious and rude results. Oh my goodness! Very yeah. rude. And then we had a little break, and then. Uh, Dave Warnicky from Do Go On mm. and Jackson from Sands Pants, they ran a game show. Yes. That so was uh, the folks from Sands Pants versus uh, myself, Jess Perkins, Matt Stewart, and Claire mm-hmm. from Suggestible Podcast. That's right. And being and my wife. Your, being your wife in your life. <laughs> uh, and and uh, we had like a family feud style game show. We did. Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. Mm. Uh, it was fun for me because I didn't have to be in that one. Yeah, that's like, right. I'm going to sit this one. Here. You sat at side of stage and heckled. I it's, did, mm. <laughs> not as much as I could have. My that's you. true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that was really fun. I feel that was not for want of trying, just because there was just so many people on stage yelling into <laughs> yeah, microphones. That's right. You exactly. couldn't really get an e- a word in edgeways. But I thought it was handled, balanced really well. I think so too. Those guys did a really good job hosting mm-hmm. that. Everyone did a good Thank job. Thank you, everybody in the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook mm. page, who I believe were the survey respondents yes. to for all the answers in that in the family feud situation yeah so you're the family out there listeners and where the feud yeah with a feud or food in this it's called family Fam- food family in this food. situation because yeah. of copyright reasons <laughs> right. legally grant daniel will break all our legs he owns that right even though it was an australian version of that show and he no longer hosts it because it was cancelled yeah he still owns it yeah. okay good excellent yeah. It's news time, Mason. Big news this week. This is what I'm doing. I'm going to talk about Jurassic World, Westworld, Batman news. World. Co- well, yep. Batman news world. That's right. Uh, big shift in DC Comics, and then we've got some controversial comic stuff to uh, talk about. How's that? I'm, I'm working that into the intro. Bit of sizzle. Oh, that's good. I like time it. Co- you didn't like it last week? What's changed? I didn't see any examples last week. <laughs> okay. You could have given me a free, 
fresh shot at it. You know, you could have explained. A free-flowing lift? Yeah, free-flowing lift. <laughs> Great. Thank you. That's all I ask for. Time codes, as always, are in the description if mm. you do want to jump around. Uh, Jurassic World 3 news. Chris Pratt has said it, uh, it's going to feel very much like how Endgame brought everything together for Marvel. So you know how there was one and maybe a half good Jurassic Park world movies. I remember that, yeah. Or, or, or in general movies. What, what, which ones of those do you like? Go. Uh, Bear in mind, I know you haven't seen two or three. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we've, uh, we've had this discussion. Just I feel a that quick update, they're all Mason. approximately it's equal. In the time codes, in, people want to skip ahead. In my opinion, every movie with Jurassic in the title is approximately equal in But quality. people are going to write in and say, like, what about Jurassic Velocipasta or whatever, all those ones that come out? Or what oh, about like, Jurassic what about, Dinosaur Space What about Cr- Cretaceous World? doesn't yeah. have Jurassic in the title, does it? Mm. Mm. Well, they're all on the same page as far as well, I'm Well, you seem like a bit of a Jurassic snark, if you don't mind me saying so, Mason. I don't mind you saying so, because <laughs> that's a delightful turn of phrase. <laughs> Thank you. So, I, I mean, I think. Um, I, I mean, th- I'm a like a vo- I'm like a velociraptor at like a hair salon, and I've got the big <laughs> hair dryer on my head, and I'm getting my nails done, and yeah. I'm like, mm. <laughs> didn't like that laugh. Oh, I don't think Jurassic Park's as good as everyone says it is. Mm. I'm drinking a white wine. <laughs> I'm getting real saucy. It's the middle of the day, but you don't yeah, mind. I don't it. You don't, you don't I go to work. I got you nothing just do to this. do. <laughs> I'm just I'm just here for snark. <laughs> So, uh, so what I think... <laughs> oh, not as, a, not as a clever girl as everyone says. <laughs> so what I think he really means by this is, like, the original cast is back. Because it's oh, Sam right, Neill, yeah. Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum. Right, okay. Um, who have also popped up in various other Jurassic yeah, movies right. along the way. Mm-hmm. So, and then they're all going to line up and punch all the dinosaurs, I assume. Do the you end. feel like there is going to be a massive disconnect between the Jeff Goldblum of Jurassic Park... Mm. And Jeff Goldblum, who exists now, who's a massive goofball. <laughs> you think? Well, they're... he's a bit of a goofball in the first one. Yeah, he takes a serious turn in two uh-huh. because he's very much the one who's like, I fucking hate this island. Right. Of dinosaurs. <laughs> why are we back? <laughs> why in this am island? I doing this? Mm. Uh, and and then of course he's in the last. He's one. He's in the last one. And he's of. just kind of being stern with a beard. <laughs> yeah. in, in the last one. So I don't know. I feel like his public persona has shifted from. I mean, people are still like, oh, you know, Jeff Goldblum, pretty sexy, or whatever. Mm. But it's sexy in like a. Big glasses, kind of like a garish shirt. Yeah, that kind mm. of vibe. Like he's kind of a he's kind of a goofy jazz man now. He isn't exactly. like a sexy open shirt guy That's anymore. Exactly right. I think people are going to be like, "What the hell? What's going on here?" I'm okay with I this. I think he can pull it off. He was in that new Independence Day, and he pretty much did. He can, he can, he can slip back into that. Well, he can certainly try. <laughs> oh, I'm, no. I'm Jurassic Snark <laughs> again. You oh. sat, you're on the source too early. Yeah, I don't I know, like right? it. Uh, it's always happy hour somewhere. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I, yeah. So okay. I, don't I don't think we're gonna get so it. So it's it's gonna. I don't think they're consistently good enough to be like, wow, this payoff is really like. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, because I think they're like the first one's really good, and then they're kind of up and down and mm. very like within movies. Oh yeah, right. Like uh-huh. I, I like the Lost World a lot in parts, and other parts I'm like, geez, this is right. <laughs> yeah, but it'll be a mixing of the old crew and the new crew. Exactly. So is there anybody you'd want to see? From the original? Yeah, or like any of the original ones that you like. I that, wish that guy got a I shot. wish the actor who played Muldoon could come back. But he was uh, But he was mauled to death by in in the... Do we the, see him get mauled to well, death? Well, yes, and also he's dead in real life. So, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Maybe maybe Nedry made it out. Yeah, it's true. He didn't. But, uh, Are what you if sure? He did? Yeah, he was I mean, mauled to death. <laughs> <laughs> he was in that car. He was mauled to death. All right, but how about this? And they never... I think... Bring it back as some sort of virtual reality assistant. Oh, like a little 90s yeah. gif? Yes. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, of course, and Wong, uh, Wong will be back. BD Wong, fine. So yeah. maybe, they'll, yeah, maybe mm. somebody will finally suck him in the jaw for being yeah. evil. <laughs> finally? Yeah. Yeah, I like that guy. Uh, did you see The Matrix on set? The, oh, do you got more uh, did I have maybe, thoughts? Yeah, maybe I do. Um, I don't know. Where do you think the plot's going to go this time around? Uh, well, they're in the world. Oh, they're they? in the world. That's true. It's yeah. a real, it's a true Jurassic world. Yeah. You on board? Yeah. Looks like your Jurassic Bark is not as bad as your bite, Mason. Or the other way around. <laughs> is that right? Well, you would say that because you're a dumb bitch. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you got to get off the sauce, man. No, I won't. You, you're not making this easy for me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the Matrix. Did you see it was filming? Oh, I saw like a tiny clip. I, I saw a clip that was so short that it could be probably co- compressed down to a GIF. Sure. It was, but it was, it was like a real stunt. Yes. Was p- two people leaping off a building. They're all That's wired right. up. And there was the other bit of uh, Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss. He's got his John Wick hair happening. And they're oh, on yeah. a motorbike together. Did you see that one? I didn't see that they're one. They're back, Mason. Oh. And what are they Are they, they all in 
They're the Matrix all that seem to be that way. Huh. Yeah, who's to say what's going I'm on? Look in into this. Yeah, have a quick have, have a quick gander. Quick. Have a okay. look see. I will. That's currently filming, not in Australia that one, like like the other ones. Mm. But uh as we've talked about before, I saw a rumor that they're set in the real world or something yeah, in the Matrix of yeah. movies within because of course both of those characters died at the end of the That is true. Or yeah. at the very least, um Carrie Ann Moss's character died. But also you could also bring that character back as like an avatar or a 90s gift. Well, yeah, exactly. Going, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that's uh, exactly uh, right. Uh, uh. You know what I mean? And of course, if we're, if we're you know, if we're going by the Matrix online rules, I am. Uh, maybe they're still alive. Is that, a, what, is that what happened in that game? I can't remember. Mm. I'm, something about their, their essences were like scattered across the world and blah, 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 and you get them back together. They come back to you life. You can kiss them. them. Yeah, you can kiss them. Oh, I see. Yeah, they're looking Matrixy, aren't they? Mm. I mean, not that matrixy. It does look more like Carrie Ann Moss is just giving Keanu Reeves, mo- you know, regular Keanu Reeves like a lift somewhere. They're going to get some coffee or something. Yeah, yeah, what kind yeah. of bike is that? Is that a white bike? No, I think that's, that's just light, the lighting. Oh, it's a silver bike. Yes, it's a silver Sorry. bike. Yes, I tell you, I just call they it. They look lumps. less matrixy. They certainly look less matrixy, which might lend credence to the idea that mm. it's a. They're, yeah, they're they're going to a they they're going to a some sort of fan convention involving the original <laughs> Matrix movies. But on a motorcycle for some reason, and they don't want to. Or do maybe it. they're going to the convention and they're interrupted by agents in the real world, and they've got to get on a, a motorbike and go do Matrix stuff. You Would you be mean? upset if this movie was like the actor Keanu Reeves is actually Neo from the whatever? Like he's like, but these are just movies I was in. That's my Keanu Reeves. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a Bernie Sanders Keanu Reeves. <laughs> he's also been punched really hard in the solar plexus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come back here! Oh. I can't make this jump. I'm yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I wonder what level of... I don't want that. Yeah, no. Uh, what le- then again, anything could work. What whatever, level yeah. of metafiction we're going to get. Mm, metafiction. Yeah. Mm, I don't Very know. Very good, yeah. Uh, here's a question for you. Yes. West for Westworld Season 3 trailer, best world or worst world? What it's we got? kind of like the best world mm. for some, probably for the rich, yeah. less so than the poor. <laughs> I you know what I mean? Man. We don't really see the poor. In no, the and good. It's... It, yeah, it looks good. Also, looks good. Yes. <laughs> no, I mean it's good that we don't see the poor. Yes. I don't want them gumming up my TV shows with their filthy rag clothes. That's basically. right. Only rich, <laughs> sexy people, in my opinion. Uh yeah. We get we get a this this one seems to be set almost exclusively in the real world, which to me is some great. spoilers. Some spoilers for Westworld if you don't want to yeah. know about West the previous seasons of Westworld. Yes, which I enjoyed uh, both Barely. of those. This this feels like it's going to be a future world. Well, it's definitely a future world. Because, you know, there's the movies Westworld. And, and future, world. Movie, future World. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Does this feel like a final season trailer for you? I but don't I mean, think they so. could. Oh, right, yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, they could make anything look like that. There seems to be Westworld replicant robots going up against each other. like there's no, t- no, no tomorrow. Obviously. That's true, yeah. yeah. Mm. And Aaron Paul in this seems to be confirmed as some sort of Westworld replicant man. Isn't he like a man on the street man? Maybe. I don't know. I didn't really. Wait. I just kind of. <laughs> I didn't delve into it. I just watched uh-huh. it and went, good. Okay. There's a Big Mac. There's a there's yeah. a robot without its skin. Okay, yeah. I got it. I feel like I feel like the trailer seemed to suggest De- she, Dolores and Aaron Paul's character have seem to have a conversation which suggests that he is being he's he's being he's an artificial man who's being oh, used. In I some thought sort of that was kind of like, well, me and you are the same because we're both slaves to oh, the system. Okay, well, how is it, in what way is he a slave? Because he's like a construction worker or whatever. Oh, he's fallen, okay, he's right. fallen off buildings. You know, they used to fall off buildings all the time or whatever. Oh yeah, in old construction. Oh, was he one of those men in the iconic? That, yeah. that Gerda, that black exactly. and white Gerda photo, and he's sitting on that. It's like yum yum yum, delicious lunch though. <laughs> I'm just Joe Lunch Pail over here. <laughs> exactly, but uh, he's not. Mm. He's Joe Replicant. That's right. Mm. Uh, that's um, 15th of March, I believe. That's back. That's very. I'm soon. I'm gonna put up a poll soon on Patreon for Caravan of Garbage for what people want to see for Westworld, like a season one, the movie. Mm. Um, there was a revival show, uh, mm. and or we could even like the original Magnificent Seven, which the Yul Brenner character is. Oh, he's based on. He's right. based on. Um, what's because it's the same guy, isn't it? It looks the same. <laughs> yes, it's true. But this one's a robot yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Physically based almost exclusively on that guy. That's right, Mason. Yeah. Anyway, in this, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's all it's all coming to a head in a way that I do not understand, mm. nor will I understand because mm. I've forgotten what happens in most of the previous seasons. I'm sure they'll do a quick recap yeah, to get you up yeah, to yeah, speed. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Tessa Thompson's got a Big Mac. That's good. Like, how's she going to handle all this situation? Big Mac, <laughs> the biggest Mac we've seen, I think. How would you handle it? If probably, you, yeah, probably a Big Mac. If yeah. you had access to a Big Mac, you probably I'd use the Big Mac. <laughs> yeah, to, cool. Yeah, to, even if it was like a little thing, like filing your tax return. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, 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 just yeah. a Big Mac with a two B pencil. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And this is where we hit the Batman news of the show, Mason. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, big Batman news. Uh, first off, would you uh, say too much Batman news? Well, I've, I'm, it's not. We're not doing the big, big Batman news immediately because Ben Affleck was talking about his Batman news. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, he yeah, left. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and as because he had this very candid interview, which I did not read through, uh, <laughs> but the, the highlights were released released on Twitter. exactly. He said that he showed somebody his bat the Batman script, and they said, I think the script is good. I also think you'll drink yourself to death if you go through what you just went through again. Yeah. So presumably talking about his run on Batman v Superman and Justice League and Live By Night and his alcoholism. Many and, years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And obviously he had family problems. We are getting divorced and you got that back tattoo and et cetera and so forth. Yeah. There's a lot going on, uh, which that article apparently covers. Mm -hmm. So I seems like if he wasn't booted from the project, which is also entirely possible, or they came to a realization that it wasn't the direction they went. It seems like it's in everybody's best interest. 100%. In particular yeah. him to, yeah, why yeah. would you do it? You yeah, don't need to do right? it. Um, if he doesn't want to do it, I'm glad he didn't do it. Do you think even if in the most ideal of circumstances, do you think he would have enjoyed his time on on the on the, I don't know, the DCEU? I don't know, because even if those movies were super well received, yep. which they weren't particularly, mm. though some people would argue that that's not true. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look, in the interest of disclosure, we released a video this week. Yes. It was about the best Batman suits yep. in media. Yep. The best bat suits. And we certainly missed some. Oh yeah. And um, we mentioned that. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh but we did we did make the mistake of mentioning the movie Batman v Superman. We thought It's four years out. It's, I mean nobody cares anymore, but people still care yeah. about our opinions on that or our wrong opinions on that movie. So As they would say yeah. people demanding we justify our opinions. Mm -hmm. Um no. No, we won't. I refuse to. <laughs> Not again. No. Yeah. Buy the episode on vinyl. Exactly. You can have it in yeah, your house. That's right. For free. Yeah. For money. For lots of money. Uh, when we release it, which we probably won't. Probably won't. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think I'd be interested to read his script, but, you know, he's doing it. He's got this new movie out where he's a sports coach and he's an alcoholic oh, yeah. or whatever, mm. which I think is mm. something that seems very cathartic for him. So, yeah, good. Yeah. Go in that direction. Mm. Then. Slam dunk, parentheses. But not the booze. That's what the movie's <laughs> called. <laughs> Do you slam dunk booze? Yeah. You slam it. I wouldn't say you slam dunk He slam booze. dunks it. That's his whole bit in the movie. He's just like, time for a slam dunk. Of booze. <laughs> and then he's sad. I don't know if I like that. But then at the end, everybody's chanting, slam dunk, but not the booze. Slam dunk, but not the oh, booze. Well, they were saying slam dunk the booze, but he won't do it. He'll walk away. There's two There's two distinct groups. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. The, in the stadium. And his kid's the, on one side, and his kid's like, don't do it. One of his kid's on one side, one of his kid's oh, on the other side. Oh, he's got an evil kid. Yeah, he's got an evil kid. Well, but just misunderstood. Evil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, okay, yeah, well, yeah. this slam dunk, but not the booze, sounds really good. Mm -hmm. uh, off the back of that, we also got our... Oh, to be clear, spoilers, he, he just slam dunks the booze. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's a bad ending. I don't like that. Because he's been lured by the evil kid. <laughs> he's, the evil kid's probably the cooler kid, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's really cool. Yeah. That's the thing, yeah. He's smoking indoors. That's that is cool, especially now. You yeah. can't really get away with that, right? Yeah, but you can if you're wearing cool sunglasses, or you're in Europe, which this movie is set. Set in Europe, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, look forward. Sorry, to it's called Slam Dunk, but, but not, not Le Boos. I was going to say, yeah. look forward to Slam uh -huh. Dunk, but not Le Boos. Who else is in that? Somebody else. Doesn't matter. And Hathaway, I want to say, or oh, that might be that Netflix thing he's doing at the moment. Okay. There's another thing. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, we got our first official and clear, not official, but clear yes. <laughs> look at Robat Bat and Bat's Batman suit. Mm. Uh, I still, I think this is a... Stuntman suit? Well, this is a stuntman suit, but I also think it's his first suit. It's his proto suit. Yeah, yeah but, right. But, uh, you know, who knows? I don't know. Okay. And he's, he's on a motorbike. Yep. It's got two big jagged bits at the top that if he... Break broke really suddenly. It'd impale him. Uh huh. And that's really cool. So we saw. So this was some. Is this leaked footage or is this? I think it's just production just footage. Filmed it. Oh, okay, right, right. When it was happening. Okay. I yeah. think the reason they showed the suit because they knew they were doing this and they're like, well, this is going to get out anyway. Oh so yeah, for sure. Uh huh. As well. So it's got this one appears to have some sort of inbuilt dark glass goggles. Yeah. In the cowl. Yes. I don't know if that's part of the. The suit in the movie, or it's just they've just added it in because it's a stunt driver doing a motorcycle yeah, thing. Because and they could light up or something in the thing, oh. or they take the eyes off and whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Like they CGI it out. Yeah. I don't know. We don't. Yeah, it's a stunt suit probably, and it's, yeah, I, I don't. I don't love it, but like they'll probably CGI a cape on it and. Well, see, or, that's exactly or even it. CGI the whole thing. We just yeah. don't really know. Well, exactly. I mean, you know, people are people have thus far been critical of a number of number of things about, it, including the ears. Yeah. Uh, but they can change the ears. Yeah. They well, can change the ears in every frame of the movie if they want to. They changed uh, Shazam's boots. Oh. Uh, in the he had different boots in the filming, and then they just CGI the boots completely differently. Huh. 
So yeah, so it kind of looks motocrossy and like it's the padding and all yep. that, and yeah, it's uh, I don't know people are saying it's kind of Daredevil esque, which I don't, I don't disagree. Some people with are saying it's Krusty Demon esque. Oh my god, remember mm-hmm. the Krusty Demons? That's uh, why I said it. I bet yes. they're still out there, aren't they? One hundred percent, they're still out there. It's good to hear. Yeah, um, yeah, but I, I mean, yeah, he may, he, he may be. He may be, you know, motorcycling without the cape. Maybe he's lost the cape in a previous scene. Mm. But you're right, maybe they had the cape in CG. Yeah, they CG capes all day yeah. now. Also, the, the bike does fall over. Yes. It's just <laughs> That is how the video ends. <laughs> just step four. This is a real, this is a real uh, Daniel Craig as Bond. Oh, not so oh, much yeah. Daniel Craig as Bond moment where he was, you know, they put him on the, the boat and he had to wear a little life jacket. And they're like, oh, Bond, he's a, look at this guy. But I think the, the, the press seem to be taking this a little better. Yeah, because it's not Robert Pattinson in the suit. No, exactly. Oh, imagine if it was him. Oh my God, he'd yeah. never hear the end of it. Right. Uh, but no, I think you know. I'm in, I'm still intrigued by this. I still the, like the rumors are still of like year one, year two ish long Halloween, etc. Yeah, so right. This mm-hmm. Selena Kyle so also sends me on a bike next to him, but it's not a very Batmany bike. It just looks like a just looks like a bike. regular bike. But again, but again, but I don't think they'll change it. But I still think this is early day stuff. And even if they don't change it in this movie. You mean early day stuff in the in the narrative? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And like you'll be like, I need a better suit to fight this whatever I'm doing today. Exactly. Yeah. What have I got? Something else. Something giant like, robot suit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, to mention this it's to got giant a jet robot. Yeah, jet pack. Gives me all the powers of Superman. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> Great. Um, I don't. I don't know. I'd, I'd love to talk more about this, but I don't really. We don't have any more yeah. information. I saw a little short documentary it was an interviewing Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson about the lighthouse. Mm. It was very fun. Apparently they would ask for direction from, is it David Eggers? Is he the director of that movie? Yes, I think it is. Say. They'd be like, uh, Robert Pattinson, Robert Pattinson, I think Willem Dafoe just rolls with anything. Yeah. But Robert Pattinson was kind of like, is it, what is, is any of this actually happening? Like in my <laughs> Robert the, Eggers, you said is, that right? Ah, uh, yeah. yes, I said David Eggers. I think. Uh-huh. Well, uh, then we'll, we'll got letters. Eggers, about yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, sh- I should have said Senor Eggers. You're correct, M- Mr. Eggers. Uh, and and you know he's asking questions like, okay, are we? Is my character and Willem Dafoe's character having you know different interpretations? Of what's going on? Is it all in my mind? And he's like, just just whatever you want. <laughs> like, <that's, laughs> So it's it seems like all three of them, the two the two main characters in that movie and the director, all have probably have a different interpretation of what that movie Whether is. Whether or not there was really a squid in that lighthouse. Yeah, have you seen it? I did see it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah. grim. Oh, black, it's gr- yeah. yeah, black yeah. and white. Oh yes, boozy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> carousing. Boozy. Yeah, it's a bit boozy. Hijinks. Yeah, you can't. You really feel like the. The drunkenness and the hungoverness. Oh, for sure. Like yeah, it feels yeah, like yeah. when you're watching it that you're uh-huh. that you've woken up hungover. Yeah, yeah. And just this this sense of like, their their absolute solace there. Like, there's just being on a on this island with no one else, and the other person's a lunatic. Yeah. What are you? What's your life now? Exactly. Yeah. Ugh, no good. It's a good movie though. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's apparently, random. it's all like all the dialogue is based off real dialogue, old timey dialogue of like from from. Ship's journals and, oh, really? and okay. ledgers and diaries and things like that. So it's all, yeah, right. it's not just. It's just not just whatever. It's just insane man chat, but it's all kind of. It's kind of that though, isn't yeah, it? It really is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure all the people writing those j- yeah. journals were insane. Yeah, you could follow it though. It's yeah. not. Anyway, that's been our review of The Lighthouse. It came out many months ago. Yeah, but it's good. It's probably streaming now. Yeah. Uh, big DC new shake up, and this is going to lead into our topic, which oh, was a I Patreon see. suggestion. Uh, Dan DiDio. Which may be how you pronounce his name. I've never. I've always said, said Didio, but Didio? I'm probably yeah, that's, no, no. Well, look, one of us is right. Dan, if you there, could, there's write every in. there's every chance that both of us are wrong. Though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's a m- closer to ninety percent chance we're both wrong. Yeah. So he took on the like the one of the head DC roles with I believe Jim Lee in 2010, uh-huh. responsible for events like the New 52 and then the counseling of the New 52. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, as rumor have it, has it that the higher ups from Warner Brothers. Uh, because of the result of the high staff turnover of late, because looking to the list of creators who have left, it's it's pretty massive. And issues with editorial and publishing plans, uh, he's been pointed to as the man responsible. Bleeding Cool, the website has said he was fired for fostering a poor work environment. Oh. And one of the a- aspects of, and I did not know about this at all, but there's this much rumoured 5G uh, comic run coming Terrible out. name. No, it's perfect. It's bad. Because of internet, Mason. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'd have to change it because it's they might be called Generation 5. Okay. And so just this probably won't happen, or at least in this form. This was the rumor of it. Mm. Uh, again, it's a rumor. 
uh, which would be seen as DC's major, uh, which would see DC's major fig- figures like Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent, Diana, and they age out of the roles of okay. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman mm-hmm. as part of a new DC timeline. So their original stories would have still taken place. Okay. So Superman would be from the 30s and s- oh, okay, so forth right, uh-huh. or whatever. So that, okay. that's apparently the idea. So then you, I guess you're going Damian Wayne and then beyond, presumably. Well, that's interesting because... After eighty years of these, eighty plus years of these characters, mm. that is essentially what Earth Two was in, yeah. in the fifties through to the eighties. It was this parallel universe in in the in the DC Comics continuity. There was Earth One, mm. which was the modern day, like as if Batman and Superman and those characters had started fighting crime just quite recently. Yeah, and they were like, but also, but we'll have our cake and eat it too. We'll have an Earth Two in which those characters started fighting crime when they were first published in like the, the 30s and 40s. Yeah, right, yeah. And so if you wanted to what if you wanted to read a story about Batman and Superman in their prime, you'd read a Earth 1 book. Yeah. And if you wanted to be like, well what if Batman got married to Catwoman and they had a kid, uh, you could what read if? that you could read an Earth 2 book kind yeah. of thing. But then they canceled that because it was too complicated. And then is that when Crisis smushed That was Crisis together? on yeah. Infinite Earths. They were yeah. like, this is too difficult. And now there's literally Infinite Earths. That's too many Earths. So they got mm. rid of all of that. All the Earths. All the Earths. And then... Even Earth 2? And so the now we're show? back. Uh, yeah, that was gone. Oh, Long no. gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, so it's back apparently. Maybe. Well, this isn't even... This is not even a new idea. Mm. Don't sell it to me like it's a new idea. They should say, brackets, like it was it <laughs> prior to the 80s. Well, I guess the idea behind this would be, uh, it'd be odd that you're suddenly speeding up the current timeline. If you're now yeah, you're just like, right. Superman's 80, older. Yeah. Just all of a sudden. People Batman's be like, been dead for 20 years or whatever. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. I just think that's... And you got punched really hard. I think it would be interesting if, and they probably wouldn't do it this way, if you if you age them up from now in relative real time oh, and slowly sure. build yeah, yeah, new yeah. characters over 10 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. But just to be like, Superman's not Superman anymore all of a sudden, I think... I think there was a good idea in aging out characters and introducing yes. new versions. I like now that they seem to have actually stuck with Superman having a son now. Like, yeah, that's something right, exactly. Of, he's had multiple versions of multiple sons and over they, the decade. And they're all erased from existence. Yeah. We, yeah. So uh, anyway, internally also, uh, Scott Snyder, who you might know, he... He's, Not personally. Well, you know him. You've met him um, personally. He's a good mm. friend of yours. That's true. Uh, apparently he... he um, Dan Didio, or Didio, yeah. backed him on Dark Mirror. Is it called Dark Mirror? It's a, it's his first comic where Dick Grayson is Batman, and he's oh yeah, it's a really right, good right. comic if you haven't read it. If it's called that, which I don't, it might I don't not know. be anymore, I, don't know. I have it. I can't. Yeah, I don't have it in front of me, so I can't remember. So he kind of said that you know I I but but it was apparently though that even though these guys you know you know that these guys clashed a lot mm-hmm. and what was planned with five G and he wanted his Dark Knight metals or metal whatever it is metal called. yes he uh-huh. wanted that separate from what's going on here okay and apparently this five G event yes uh, is still launching in October <laughs> okay. Uh, but we don't really know in what shape or form. And it seems yeah. like Jim Lee is now it's a one in charge. Pog form? Yeah. Pog, yeah. pog form. Yeah. So there's a lot of people kind of cheering on the exit of this guy. And it's, there's certainly things in here which he's done that I don't like or okay. agree with. But in his run, there's been some pretty standout stuff that he has greenlit. For example, mm. he was the season three story editor of the uh, of the animated TV series Reboot. Oh. Yeah. That's... Real, that that happened, did it? Yep, did. When did that show come out? 1997. Oh, I thought you meant the reboot reboot. No, no, no. no. The well, that, I'm talking reboots. about in the current one. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I hate I'm, that show. No, you don't. They're always stuck in a mainframe. And yeah. one of the characters was maybe called mainframe, probably. Just like us. Just like us. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but with all this talk of internal stuff, there was a few creatives, and I, I've taken two of them who commented on him and leaving. Gail Simone, who is yes, you know, uh-huh. famous comic that creator. Girl and yeah. Secret Six and all sorts mm. of stuff, yeah. Uh, she said, um, I, so Bleeding Cool is reporting that Dan is no longer affiliated with DC Comics. I liked Dan very much. We disagreed a lot, but he did a lot. But he did a lot that others took credit for. And when things went bad, he often took the blame he didn't deserve. I wish him every success. And even Scott Snyder has said, uh, Dan is one of the most passionate people I know when it comes to this medium. He loves comics with every fibre. He's also... If an, I may... Mm, if he loves comic books so much, why doesn't he marry them? <laughs> Jurassic Snark is back, everybody. It's That's our right. recurring segment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> clink, clink, clink. <laughs> so uh, he backed me on Black Mirror. There we go. That's what it was called. Oh, okay, Did I, say, right. I think I said you Dark, said Dark Mirror. Mirror. Yeah. Because yeah. Black Mirror doesn't sound right because it's another That's thing. That's another yeah. thing, yeah. Uh, when others didn't want it to happen, then Court of Owls, American Vampire. We had some nuclear fights over the years, sure. But above all, after a decade of working with him, all I feel is gratitude to Dan for his support and friendship. 
and DC will be very different without him. So, yeah, it seems like some people believe that he's taken the brunt for these things that happens. And yeah, right. as with all creative decisions, obviously there's people who hate it and love it and whatever. Yeah, right. But I still think these last 10 years of DC, there's been some pretty iconic stuff that has occurred under his watch. Yes. So, I again, even though some things that aren't great, but I think it, there's a lot of people just be like, fuck him and good. Give me one example. Of a good thing? Yes. I think there's, a, I think, like the... I think Scott the Super Sun stuff. Super Sun stuff is good. Yeah, so like uh, bad Damian Wayne being a, yep. a, a, a you know a new um, a new Robin who isn't just being erased at the, yeah. at the you know because there was a tease many years ago I think of like in the future it's Batman's son Damian Wayne and blah 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 yes and then they just the plot thread just was left dangling forever and it's like well it's yeah. nice to actually have some movement in that in direction. this narrative yeah uh-huh. yeah but uh so I don't know I we're gonna get there will be some kind of shake up. Also, New 52 was incredibly successful initially. Yeah, right. And then they kind of, it was a race to do everything all at once. Yeah. And I think that's kind of made it fall down. And of course, they erased all the old stuff. And I guess bringing all that back is a good move. But DC Rebirth wasn't as successful as New 52. But we have to remember, think. none of this is actually anyone's fault besides Dr. Manhattan's fault. Mm. Dr. Manhattan did this, right? Oh, yeah, there was that also. Yeah, narratively, it's his fault. I don't like that. No, I don't either. I don't like him at all. Yeah. No, I, don't, I don't mind. I think there's a good idea in that. Yeah. Uh, but. That's the Jeff Johns thing and whatever and so mm. forth. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out for the rest of the year and then in et cetera and so forth forever and ever. That's true. But, again, I do like the idea of characters aging out. What's going to happen to Superman's underpants? Inside, outside, both? Yeah, mm. sure. <laughs> uh, that leads us into our topic this week. It's actually a Patreon topic. I threw it out there. I was be like, what do you guys want? Got a lot of really great suggestions, 100 plus. Kevin said, uh, this is some ones we're not doing. <laughs> just so we know. But you're going to just say things. Uh-huh. Uh, Sorry, Kevin. Oh, here he is. Jurassic Snark is back, everybody. <laughs> so I don't remember if this has been done, but maybe superhero crossover movies you'd like to see made or some ones you definitely don't want to see made. Mm-hmm. Ashley says just simply Red Dwarf. Dwarf. Sorry. Thank you. I know. Uh, <laughs> Andrew says uh, movies that grew on you over time or maybe movies that you wanted to grow on you but never did. Okay, sure. And But the one I think we're going with this week, uh, this is from Taz, and she says most controversial comic book moments. Oh. Uh, the example given here is Batman Dong Edition and Hydra Cap. Those are the kind of examples that are thrown yeah, out right. there, but kind of going through a list and Googling it and things that I remember and yeah, about right. being a big deal. Uh, yeah, we could. I think this is really interesting. Should we start with Batman's Dong? Yes, I've okay. written here. Let's start with Batman's Dong. I actually wrote that. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's in my That's notes. That's pretty cool. So, for those people who don't know, there was a recent rude. It's called DC After Dark nude stuff. Yeah, nude what's it called again? It's called uh, Black Black Edition. Wait. Yeah, yeah, uh, DC Black Label. Yeah. So there you go. So essentially. Uh, it's it's for it's for grown ups. It's for people who want to see dongs in comics. This ain't your grandpappy's DC comics. No, it's I'll not. tell you what. And it's certainly not your grandpa's dong either. That's right. This is a new and fresh dong. Fresh dong. <laughs> fresh right. off the press. <laughs> yep. So they basically revealed and it's mostly just silhouetted, but you see a naked Bruce Wayne and you see his his dong, don't you? Yep. And uh it was there was such controversy. Why though? I'm gonna look I'm gonna look at I think it's because quick. it's Batman. Because if you and I think we mentioned That doesn't mean top. anything. No, because it's like a Children's character, essentially. Right. Not all of it, obviously. It's for. Well, they're not his dick. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not for children. <laughs> no. But, you know, as I mentioned at the time, you get comics like Sex Criminals or whatever, where it's, it's Dong City in there. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, right. Uh-huh. But these. These are not, you know, these are seen by a lot of people as yep. they're not for. Okay, adults. this is this is Brian Azzarello, which is not true, obviously. This. DC set up this imprint. Take our characters, do something mature. When that opportunity was given to us, we decided let's not half-ass this. Let's go all the way. We'll either go down in a blaze of glory, mm. or we hit the ball. Zuh. <laughs> Zuh. Of his dong. Let's not half ass this. But I mean, that's let's go full dong. But mature doesn't mean necessarily. Show I know. Does, dick. does that? To, does that, still that to doesn't, still that, doesn't help. I don't go straight away. Well, uh-huh. that's his dick. Then. Come yeah. on, if you're doing something mature. Right. Come on, let's come see on. it. It's the suits. What are you doing, you cowards? I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, that's an odd quote, though, to be like... Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but I guess, you know, I don't think it really adds anything to the comic but or takes away from it. I don't think it changes anything. Well, here's the thing, though. I don't know anything about that storyline besides that. I did read it, but I don't that's unfortunate. remember it. Uh-huh. Uh, did I read the Dong edition? I think because I I read mostly digital comics, so right. it'll be updated by now, for sure. So you're yeah. gonna, like again, you're going to have to get the laptop with that version on it, mm. switch all the Wi-Fi's off, put it in a in a safe or something. Well, you have to choose to upgrade oh, update okay, your comics, right, right, and right, so right. I never will. Mm. I want to, you know. Oh, maybe. but your wife could get in there and be yeah. like, "No, thank you." Oh, you know what? I've probably deleted it because I wipe stuff off my phone if I have mm. the space. 
Well, so, um, well there's no way to see it then. <laughs> How am I going to see Batman's Dawn? Yeah. How am I going to do it? But, um, so yeah, basically, yeah. So as we mentioned, they redid it. Yeah. Redong it. And yeah. now you can't see the dong. So okay. and Batman enlists the help of the foul mouth magician John Constantine. Is that the one? Yes, it's a constantly narrated story. That's right. I, okay. Yep. It's three issues, maybe? <laughs> Batman, like, your torture's hanging out. That's what he said. Uh, it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it ends abruptly from memory. Okay. Mm. But I don't remember disliking it. There you go. The dong, that is. Right, sure. I was okay with it, yeah. Mm. Do you want to then skip over to the New 52? Okay, sure. What are your thoughts on New 52? Uh, first of all, do you want to explain what it is? For those who might not know. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the new 52 was. They just rebooted everything. I know, exactly. Well, every, <laughs> every what happened is uh, every every 10, it used to be like every 20 years, but then it became every 15 years, every 10 years, every five years. Yeah. DC reboots their entire continuity. It's, awful, it's almost always in story. Yes. So like a, a big city... A galaxy de- destroying thing shows up, and it's going to erase all of reality. And the heroes race to stop it, and then they do it. But then, ultimately, but at what cost? Well, the whole all of reality has yeah, changed. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And this, and the, what, I, I don't know what the springboard was for the new fifty two. I don't know if there was a particular reality shaking event that, that there probably was that uh-huh. made it happen. I'm going to find out what it is. Sure, but basically, I was what at they Flashpoint. Did- was that before or after? I don't know. Because <laughs> I was going to say Flashpoint. Following point. the conclusion of the Flashpoint It was. Crossover. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay so I couldn't remember whether that was, right. was the start of Reaper yeah, right. or not, whether it was the start of U52. You're right. This is the problem. Yeah. And this is why this sort of stuff is controversial because they never let anything breathe. Yeah. I mean, I say that, but it's like 10 years. So what is now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Ten, yeah, right. But this one, so essentially the Flashpoint storyline was that the Flash, who at his fastest can travel through time, is mm. like, I'm going to go back in time and stop the death of my mother. Yep. There's a movie you can watch as well. Yeah, and there's also... This, the storyline was basically covered in the Flash TV series as well. Yes. So he goes back in time to uh, stop his mother being killed, and I believe the culprit is the reverse Flash. Yeah. She, he, she was killed under mysterious circumstances, and in doing so, he alters the timeline, so uh, all, of, all of reality has changed. And, it's and in, that, in the future, Wonder Woman is fighting Aquaman. Their armies are battling. and Oh, yeah. And he gets a note from... And that's where... Batman's evil dad comes from and his mum's yes, a joker. Yes, exactly, yeah, yeah, and But there is a nice moment where he get. I think it's a good comic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, apparently it still might be happening in the new Flash movie, but it seems kind of unearned to be like we're doing Flashpoint straight out of the gate. That being said, it would justify all the changes that have been made yeah, to the DC right, right, right. movie universe. What's interesting about the new 52 is one of the things they 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 did is they wanted, they got Wonder Woman, speaking of Wonder Woman, they got Wonder Woman's origin and they changed it so it was more accurate to the Greek myths. So it was like yeah. if a boy is born on the Amazonian island of Themyscira, they kill it. Yes. And 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 they, they have... They told her she was clay. Yeah, she was not. the daughter yeah. of Zeus. Yeah. And in order to have more children on, on Themyscira, they lure sailors mm. and then they, like, kill them. Yeah, cool. Throw them overboard. <laughs> Cool. So that's fun, right? They they Amazons get pregnant by sleeping with human sailors and then murder and dump at sea. So that's... <laughs> Classic. It's fun. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's a bit of a double standard, isn't it, Mason? Obviously. Very much so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's PC gone mad? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the problem also with the New 52 is it was operating on some sort of weird timeline where not all the books were operating in the same time period. So over in the Justice League comic book, Superman was like a fully realized Superman. He even had his new high-tech suit with no underpants. But in Superman's own book... He was just this dude t-shirt and rocking jeans. around t-shirt and jeans. Was that like in the a, future? Maybe? No, that was the past. And he, when he had his... I don't know if it was because that Superman... See, who's that's in, the problem. No, I mean, I, I, I'm, maybe I'm thinking of the movie, but that's because when he's introduced to the Justice League, they all try to beat him up. <laughs> so uh, is that, that t-shirt stuff must be long after then, right? I think it's before. Anyway, he's dead. Oh, that version of Superman is in fact he dead. Died. He's literally dead. Yeah. He, he wasn't just erased from continuity. <laughs> they killed, they him. killed him and then replaced him with the prior version of Superman. Yeah. yeah, I didn't like that version anyway. Right, I thought he was was the New Fifty Two also, shit, also the version that Batman had disappeared and he was replaced with Jim Gordon as Batman. That was, was a wearing, that happened in that. Yeah, and, and he was wearing a mech suit. In what? See, that's the thing though, because I think there's some good stories within it. I just don't know 
or care how yeah. it all comes together. And I don't know where they were placed. Yeah. I don't know if that was that the future, was that mm. the past. And I'm sure people could send us a spreadsheet, but I don't want it. Right? <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore because 5G is coming or whatever. Yeah. Are we still in the new 52? No, we're in the we're rebirth. Or, we are in the or rebirth. we're out of it now or whatever. Oh my God, <laughs> this is the problem. I, I don't really have a problem with this because comics always change. Yeah, no, And sure. they're bad and they're good yeah, and they're no, whatever. That's probably true, and yeah. the thing that always has mattered to me is... Good story arcs. I guess that's probably. True. I don't care about continuity. Yeah, I don't give a but shit. But I think often I feel maybe the issue. But I, you're probably right. You know, some one of the issues I had with one of these reboots is that the 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 Robin that I my favorite Robin was Tim Drake. <laughs> Sounds like a 60s sitcom. Right, my favorite Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living with too many Robins. <laughs> but this one's my favorite. That's right. But one of them like was like taken out of continuity. They were like, no, no, he was oh, never Robin. Red Robin. And, yeah, and he became Red Robin. Yeah. And it's like, well, what's the point of that it doesn't like why do it yeah. why do it i mean it yeah. doesn't you know just just yeah let's just say what i mean did you do they have a maximum number of quotas was did bill finger one day or bob kane be like there can only ever be five robins <laughs> in continuity at any given time well, I don't so think one in one out that's my rule for robins if it was bill finger nobody would have listened to him so I don't that's think true it was yeah bill finger, wouldn't yeah. have been bill finger yeah exactly no i don't right. understand that no. but again like you can read that first new 52 aquaman run the one and woman one the Batman The run. Aquaman one was very good, yeah. if I recall. Yes, yeah, so if you read that entire Scott mm. Snyder run, and even because he just finished it with, he's carrying Joker's head around a lantern oh, or yeah, whatever yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but also they had to do 52 new books, well, right? But they didn't, though, did they? Because that was the idea, but I don't think they got to them. And they right. made Lobo, like, trim and sexy. Yeah, he, that's how he started it. Lobo yeah, began right, his okay. life trim and sexy, and then mm. he got bigger and more of a caricature. In the as 90s, the I assume. As the character got more, like, fan service yeah, they were right. like, okay, okay, let's make him bigger and weirder. Yeah. And I think what happened as well, like, I'm sure that he got certain artists who who drew everybody in a kind of caricature-y way. Yeah, right. And then, the further, and then people were like, I like that style. Let's have everybody do it. And yeah. And kind of, you know. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's fun, isn't it? It's very fun. Should we get off this one thing that we're stuck on? The new fifty two. No, yeah. let's 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 maroon ourselves in the new fifty two. Got so many more a, things. Okay, yeah. carry on then. This is also a rebooty kind of thing, and I I just need you to explain it again. Oh no, uh, Marvel's Heroes Reborn. Oh, okay, I can do this. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> so this is fun for me. I, I know. Just okay, throw so things at you so, so you basically, what happened was these aren't all reboot things, by the way. No, no, there was some other this stuff is just, that isn't reboots. Yeah. But basically, what happened was is I think. Marvel had a bunch of like a number of character like a number of series that weren't that never particularly did they never did particularly well like from like the nineties to to now they haven't ever been particularly popular sure. like the X Men are wildly popular Spider Man wildly popular so but a few others were not and so they were like let's get some super hot creator types. Like, like from Image, Ooh. Image Comics, can you believe it? Your Liefelds, yeah, your Lees. Yeah, your Lees, your Quills Portacios. Mm, and the they were place. like, okay, let's... The premise was there was, a, there, was a, there was a crossover series featuring a villain called Onslaught. Mm. And they all, all the good guys had to team up and defeat Onslaught. Was he maybe Professor X's brain or something? Yeah, he was, profe- <laughs> he was, he was Magneto's evil spirit inside Professor X's body. And That's then it right. created a... a an, a, a new being with all their powers plus more powers. Mm. But at the end, in order to defeat Onslaught, a number of the heroes, coincidentally the ones that weren't particularly popular and weren't selling a lot of books, they all like sort of charged at him and were seemingly all killed. But Franklin Richards, the son of uh, 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 Mr. Fantastic and mm. the Invisible Woman, put them instead into into a parallel reality where everything was cooler and sexier. Oh and they God. had and they had like new origin stories. A lot of beach time? Not as much beach time as you'd think. Yeah. But Iron Man got a book. Fantastic Four got a book. These were the also... It's weird that they're the not popular characters. Uh, Captain America was in there, I yeah, think. Captain America got a book. There was an Avengers book. Yeah. I think there was a Thor. What's interesting about that is that now these are all the most... Yes. I mean, with the exception of Spider-Man, who's always perennially it's popular. It's because of the movies, though, Yeah, right? it's because yeah. of the movies. And it, the reason that the characters... The reason that the MCU has this particular raft of characters mm. is because they were never popular in the comic books. Yeah. Or they were, they, in recent memory, they weren't popular in the comic books. So they were never licensed out to any of the movie studios yes. to make, you know, a Spider Man movie or an X Men movie. I did a video on it. It's yeah. called Marvel's so, Gamble or something. Yeah, right. right. And so these characters, Marvel still owned them. Yes. And so, and, and so they were doing stuff like rebooting them in weird ways or whatever. And so they when when they. 
when they put together their own movie studio, these are the characters they had left, essentially. With the exception of the Fantastic Four, yes. Yeah, can't account for that. You can, <laughs> no one ever could. Yeah. So would you say it was a success or not a success? I don't know if it made any money. You're right. So well, despite all of these things. Yeah, right. And so was it in the regular... I mean, I bought them all. <laughs> sure you did. But yeah. in the regular universe, those characters were replaced. Is that right? With newer versions? No, those characters, the people were just like, what happened to Iron Man? Where'd that was it. So they weren't like, there's a new, like, War Machines doing the Iron Man stuff or whatever. Oh, uh, there were a few replacements. The uh, This was the... Actually, what the more interesting stuff was what happened in the regular Marvel Universe where everybody was gone. So because New York had no Avengers, mm. uh, the, the, the new greatest superhero team was the Thunderbolts, which was actually a bunch of supervillains in disguise. Yeah, right, okay. So that was a good... That, that is a concept that remains, you know, popular. Okay, to, so to this very day. It's weird they haven't done a Thunderbolts... I think it's coming. You think it's coming? Hot, movie? fast. Yeah, because you need that build-up of villains who haven't also been killed. Yes. So it's taken some time because a lot of them have. But also realities and whatever. Oh, yeah, so just whatever. bring them back. Just bring them back. Who cares? Right. Well, speaking of hero, heroes turned villains, or vice versa. Oh, you've got also, more? Well, I was going to say, just if, if you want to, some of the art was not great. I mean, it was like well, it was that di- era, wasn't it? Was it was the image and dyma- dynamic and sexy kind of thing. Yeah, but it was it ran like out of a broken spine. Everybody, Google "Heroes Reborn Captain America." Oh, yes, you've That's, seen it. You've yeah. definitely seen it. If yeah. you're listening to this, you've seen it. And 100, percent one of them will be like one of the one of the pictures will be like a side by side, like somebody's imagined him nude as yeah. well. <laughs> like take the uniform off and imagine what that man looks like. Hot stuff. That huge side of beef, weird mm. man. All in all, you loved it. No. You didn't like it, everyone. It was, it was bad. Mm, Jurassic Snark, here he is. <laughs> it's, not how, it's not how Snark works. It is, mate. You didn't like it. Anything you don't like is pure Snark. Oh, I, I get it. Okay. <laughs> uh, and when basically what happened at the end of that is they they all, all returned to their own reality and all the all the, all the the narrative issues they had in the, in the pre, you know, prior to going in were just suddenly resolved. That's lucky. Like prior to Iron Man going in there, he turned evil yeah. because of time travel shenanigans and then he was killed and replaced by his teenage self. Yep. And so the teenage self went into the, uh, the this parallel universe and became an adult. But when he emerged from that fake reality, he was just normal Tony Stark again right. uh, with no explanation. And he just had all these other memories. Just had all these other world. memories, yeah. yeah. Well, Comic books. Then, and different realities. Yeah, different they? realities, yeah. Merging, he's like, my brain's merged. <laughs> probably yelled, my brain's merged. Probably he did. Out. No, that's yeah, true, yeah. yeah. So Hydra Cap is a newer thing, which was yes. quite controversial, I feel. No, it was said it was, but I, it, I, it's not, I don't right. think. I think it's just a... I mean, if you've read the story, and I'll, I guess I'll spoil it at the end, he, he's not that at the end. <laughs> okay, maybe good. maybe explain the start. Okay, first, so though. essentially, uh, it's like Captain America's back. He's back from the dead. And America's everyone, greatest whatever. hero. He's, he's, and everyone's super excited. But it turns out, because of fucking around with the Cosmic Cube, mm-hmm. uh, multiple villains, mostly led by Red Skull, I believe. I have read it. <laughs> I can't really remember. <laughs> have you? Yes. They go back in time and they mess with his past, so he's got loyalty to Hydra. Yeah, right. And so he's essentially Captain Hydra, and he ends up running kind of the world as yeah. the president. And as often sorts. happens with any kind of, uh, you know, character change or comic book related thing mm. is that this idea gets, goes out into the mainstream. This is, this was, was this pre, no, this was, this was during the MCU, right? Yeah. This is like four yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah. Maybe? So basically what happens is this, this article start being written in the mainstream media and people are like, they've made him evil. Well, <laughs> this is, what, how would you? You can't. You can't make it. And then Marvel's like, yeah, 2017, and he's, de- Hydra, and he's definitely going. He's definitely Marvel's like, he's definitely going to stay evil forever. We've yeah. made him evil forever. This is a. Re- we've done this for a reason. For a re- and it's and it's real. We've made him real evil forever. And then the mainstream media's like, oh my god, they've ruined an icon. And then a couple of years later, he's just regular Captain yeah, America. I don't even know if it was that long, but yeah, he was really in there the whole time. And yeah, the spirit of Bucky and something summoned him out. I can't remember. I have read it. <laughs> it's good from memory. I just haven't read it today, which is why. I don't remember it. Oh, well, you should have read it today. Because, again, anything from, like, the past four or five years when my son was born, I just have my memories just, like, I don't know. I'm the same. Mm. Any... <laughs> so it's not just a kid I thing. Th- no, I think, thing. No, I think it's your son is projecting some sort of wave from his brain and it's yeah. erasing our He does memories. have that laser. It's probably the laser to the brain. <laughs> It'll do it, yeah. So, I don't know, Cap Hydra. Here we go. Here's but this doesn't, doesn't this just prove the bloody, the absolute, just the... What's the word I'm looking for? The gall. The the audacity. Absolute, your sheer audacity. No, more the like the... Um, I'll think of the word later. <laughs> okay. what, what, in conjunction to what though? Just the idea that like all this stuff is so... The comic book stuff is just... It just comes and goes. Yeah, and, the, and really, all, of, this, all yeah. of this is that. Yeah. Though I think some of this stuff has had impacts to this day though for the worse. 
Yeah, um, right. <laughs> what about this one though? Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, uh, their siblings, but also they were maybe having sex or something. That was oh, this was that? this was the this was an Ultimate Comics. This yeah. was again, this is a new sexy reboot. A lot of this stuff. <laughs> some people want. Yeah, the new <laughs> sexy reboot. That's right. A lot of this stuff seems to be people going. It's a lot of stunts, really. Yeah. But this was the again the Ultimate Universe, which was operating in parallel with the regular Marvel Universe, mm. and it was like, well, what if? What if you, we don't want people to have to open up an X Men comic book and there's a million years of continuity with this and I don't know why how, why that why does that character hate this character and who's what's this relationship between these two characters yeah. or whatever they're like let's start it all again let's have some modern day origins let's free it of all the continuity yes and let's have Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver their brother and sister but sex stuff yeah, it's, it's weird. Yeah. yeah I haven't read any of it <laughs> okay. I just know it's a big deal. Uh, and it's gone now, I think. The Ultimate Universe, it is gone, yes. But some of it have survived. Miles Morales did. Well, you had the same problem with this as like I said with the New 52 where they they did all the history really quickly. They had to rush it all like in. Somebody's 40 like, years of somebody's history. Somebody's like, well, oh, this, this universe doesn't have a Venom yet. Yeah. What if I invent the Venom for this universe? Mm. Bad. Fine. Uh, in a jar. Yeah, it was in a jar. a jar. Yeah, it was in a jar. Jar of Vegemite gone bad, left that's in the sun. That's, that's right. what happens. Yeah. Um, that's what his, his catchphrase was, good day, mate. Yes. This next thing, I think, is the... Is I'm full of vitamin B. <laughs> is the... Uh, and teeth. Yep. The, uh, <laughs> this thing, I think, is the catalyst. Oh, yes. It's not the first kind of stunt, but it's kind of responsible for modern comic book day stunts. Oh. Do you know what I'm talking is about? Is it the killing joke? I was going to say Death of Superman. Oh, yeah, okay, right. Uh, because it was like, that was the real, like, Superman's dead and he's never coming back. Yeah. And people were like, what's, what are we? What's it was on the front of the newspaper. Is, like, is, real newspapers. Yeah, but it's an icon. What yeah. are they going to... I remember the... Um, the peak of the comic book 90s boom. I remember Australia's The Late Show mm. from the D Generation had oh, yeah. a joke about the death of Superman. And mm. I'm like, wow. Well, all, my, all my interests are intersecting. Yes, yes. I'm, 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 it's a shame that Superman's dead forever, but it's worth it. Yeah, exactly. But of course he wasn't dead. No, two, a couple of years? Can't remember. A couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. It's a really strange story if you've read it now because mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff in there. I've mentioned this before, but it's just like, what is any of this? Right. It's so steeped in continuity. From back then, Like, yeah, who exactly. were all these... Supergirl's not really Supergirl. She's like an yeah. alien blob who can yeah. shapeshift into Supergirl, yeah. <laughs> and who's also dating Lex Luthor, yep. who's the clone of Lex Luthor because he's Lex Luthor's... So it was his son, not really his son, but he pretended he was son, yeah, and, he, his, and his hair continually grows. So he, yeah, so, so Lex Luthor... <laughs> Uh, don't he, read it. Don't read it, no. <laughs> oh, you can skip but all that. Lex Luthor got cancer because he was always wearing a kryptonite ring. Cool, bro. And then he, so he had got another body cloned and then he put, then he had his, he got it cloned in Australia. Mm. And so, I guess it's cheaper. Vegemite. Yeah, Vegemite. Get out, mate. And then he, had his, then he had his brain transplanted into this clone and then he claimed to be his own son. Got this new bod. And then he started dating Supergirl. That I can boogie was bod a blob. with. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bo- dating this blob. Yeah. It was, called, it was called The Bod and His Blob. <laughs> So the comic book was called. And he make a comic book about anything yeah. back then. And his hair continually grew all the time. And it was red. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's well, he is red, isn't he? He's always been red. Yeah, I think so, yeah. 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 And also in very early stories, this is unrelated, but one of the reasons that Lex Luthor hates Superman is because he, Superman made him go bald. That's in correct, a yes. failed experiment, yep. which was also actually Lex Luthor's fault. It was 100% Lex Luthor's yeah. fault. But there was a fire. He, he started an experiment. There was mm. a fire. And then Superman came in and he's like, I'll blow out this fire. And he whoosh, did his super breath. the vapors. The vapors got in, in, in all of Luther's follicles. Mm. And all his hair, his hair fell out. He was like, curse you, Superman. He, he blew some super nair on his face. <laughs> on his scarf. <laughs> that's right. Mate, you made a big deal of it at the time, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So that was, I think, set up a lot of the stunts, including like Batman getting his back broken. And 100% the, the it, it established the playbook of like, we're changing continuity Forever. Yeah. This is never coming back. I like a lot of the ideas behind that story. I really like the idea of the four Superman turning up mm. and which one's the real one. Spoiler alert, none of them. Mm-hmm. But is it four? It was four, wasn't it's it? It four, yeah. yeah. And, I, and, I, and I would have really liked to have seen something done with that in live action when they killed Superman. To be like, yeah, not right. just go, well, we zapped him with a box and now he's yeah. back. Mm-hmm. What What's the fallout from that? You want, Aside from people going, we're sad because Superman's dead, well, Speaking maybe? of fallout, you want a cyborg Superman, also played by Henry Cavill, but he's got a metal mustache. Oh, my God, Mason. Right? The dream. Yes. Yeah. It also resulted in that uh, awful it, Death of Superman video game we played. Oh, yeah. Did, did we do a still car- banked. Did we, did, we did a caravan of garbage on it, but I feel like the end result was so boring. I never put it out. I've still yeah, got we it. never put it out. Yeah, because yeah. uh-huh. I'm like, I gotta pay to get this edited, <laughs> right? And then it won't make any money. And it was just a side-scrolling beat 'em up, and it never. It's just the same it's thing just again. The same and thing also, so all the levels. characters play exactly the same. Yeah. So whatever yeah. version of Superman you, it doesn't. It doesn't super, matter. Yeah. 
Yeah. But imagine, though, if off the back of that, though, you, you then made this Superman movie without Superman where you've got these four Supermen in it. Yeah. And you could have introduced Steel and Superboy and mm. Eradicator and yep. Metallo, whatever that other one was. Or Cyborg whatever. Superman with the big mustache. Yes. Yeah. Hank Henshaw's got the, the same Lex Luthor story, but, but essentially. He was an astronaut yeah. with his wife, and they went on an astronaut mission <laughs> into space and then their their bloody their shuttle yeah. was shuttle was about to explode, and then Superman rescued him. But he went bald. But he'd be exactly, <laughs> and his wife went bald. Can't yeah. be hanging out with a bald wife. <laughs> but then his wife died, and he's like, "I blame you, Superman." But also, when he went into space, he gained the ability to control machines with his mind. Technopath. Yes, you're right. You're 100 percent right because I just googled it as well. And then when then when he defeated then when Superman he he was a Superman villain for a while, and then when Superman defeated him. His brain went up back into space, and it found well, his, his energy waves or whatever, and found the spaceship that Superman came to Earth in. So it had enough Kryptonian oh, okay. DNA and enough Kryptonian technology in it that he could clone himself a Superman body and with he's cyborg like, bits. And they're like, "What do you remember, Sir Cyborg Superman?" He's like, "I remember some things." <laughs> yes, <laughs> and that's pretty much all. He certainly didn't have a bald wife. Let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't tell you who my wife yeah. is currently, but... Uh, mm, there's one thing you could accuse me of. It's certainly not that. <laughs> tell you that much. Do you want... I mean, Batman broke his back, which... He I didn't feel break like his own back. <laughs> he did. He picked himself up and broke himself over his own Wow. <laughs> over one of his luxurious banisters. Because that's what the rich people do. They're so bored. They've got nothing to they do. They don't even They're care, like, oh, my God. I just so, want to feel something. The idea behind this, though, was also because... People wanted Batman to be more edgy and cool and real. And wasn't it DC wanted that also? So they went, well, let's do the edgy, real Batman well, and yeah, show you how dumb it is. I think some creators in in the Batman mm. uh, in the Batman creator camp were like, yeah, let's if, if if that's what you want, we'll do it. We'll go too far, and then yeah. everybody will be begging us to bring it back to the status quo. I don't know how true that is. Yeah, but that's what they've said in yeah. the past. Yeah, and. Were people begging for him to come back at that point? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really no. remember. Mm. It's a big deal at the time. It's probably a documentary on it. No doubt. I'll just make it out of this, probably. Yeah, this will just use this. We don't mind. I just mean, add pay, dramatic pay us, music. Pay us, pay us. Add, add some reverb and some yeah. dramatic music. And then and you can do this. And then things were changed forever. Yeah. Bruce Wayne was flying high. <laughs> and it all came crashing down. <laughs> on a banister. He did it himself. <laughs> I mean, that, but that, that, was, that was, you know, there's been some... Uh, echoes of that in, in other Batman stuff. So, like, oh, in The Dark Knight Rises, of course, Bane was, yeah. the, was the instigator of that. Even, I guess, um, was Kingdom Come after this? Because he's got this neck brace in that. But that could just be genuine wear and tear. I think tear, Kingdom I Come was after this. Yeah. But I think I figured that's just because just he's just been general doing wear that and tear. Anyway, being yeah. Batman for being decades, Batman for probably. Yeah. How did he come back? Was it mostly just exercises? That was magic. It turned, it turned out, well... Was it Lazarus stuff? Did he, t- did he put a rope around... Did he, Loop a rope under his arms, and then a guy kicked him in the back. No, like in the dark no it rises. turned out it turned out that one of his like doctors slash love interests also had like psychic healing powers. Oh yeah, which was kind of like a it was kind of a lame cop out. Like just Lazarus Pit. Does right. it do that though? No, he doesn't Lazarus Pit. No, just dip. Just go up to your to your armpits. You don't even have to put your brain in it. If you put it Kingdom Come you into Google, mm. the first result is an action role playing game, Kingdom Come Deliverance, which came out in twenty eighteen. That's not the. That's the one I want. No. Is that the one you want? No. There's a sequel to that also, isn't there? Not the role-playing game, the comic. Ah, uh, yeah, it was just called The Kingdom. Mm. That's where uh, that's where we f- had the first appearance of Damien Wayne. Ah. But he was Damien Al Ghul, I think. <gasps> yeah, twist. Twist. Um, Kingdom Come came out in 1996. Let's yep. look up Night's End. I mean, oh, Kingdom Come is its own thing anyway, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. It's really mm. Nightfall. God damn it. Nightfall. Is about it's a TV series. Yeah, 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 yeah. DC, you, your search en- engine optimization is not good. <laughs> Nightfall was 1993, 1994. Well, okay, so I was going to say 93, but I didn't want to back myself. Okay, don't. Yeah. Never do. Yeah, but uh, that, I, again, that could just be a coincidence. I think it's coincidence. What about this? We're, we're st- they're stepping back in time. This is more the government making a big deal of comics. Excuse the, me? The Comics Code Authority. Oh, right. Which is like comics. Pro- Do- Dr. Promotes. Frederick Wortham. S- yes. We, talked about it? we may have talked about this on the Probably. podcast, I think. But in the 50s. Big scare campaign. Big scare c- campaign. There was a guy called Dr. Frederick Wortham. He sucks straight up. He sucks straight up. <laughs> and he was like, thank you. <laughs> if they reprint the book, they should put that on the cover. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he made a book called The Seduction of the Innocent. And basically, he was like, all these juvenile delinquents, it's comic book's fault kind of thing. Yeah. And and some of his... But, but 
It's just boomers running amok, mate. It was that's boomers. What it was. <laughs> that's right. Or as they called them at the time, regular people. <laughs> but we know better, don't we? We do. Yeah. It's like the it's that idea of like the worst man you know made a great point. You know, like that yeah, I, that right. onion article kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. But some because some of the stuff was some of the comic book stuff at the time was quite grisly. Yes. And like there'd be like torture and murder and like you real, know the, real crime, big big, big yeah. time crime stuff. Yeah. They're like the guy Bill Gaines, who I think published Mad Magazine. He he would also do like. Tales from the Crypt, and he would do like, yeah, uh, like even more grisly crime stuff, and you know, hor- horrible torture and maiming and all that sort of stuff. And it made sense that you'd be like, well, maybe we don't want to show kids all that sort of stuff. But the, all the the rules that were set in place after this, oh well, I mean, I'll, well, I'll talk about the book. But the, mm. the the book was some of the examples were like, oh look, it's it's a picture of a robin and his. He's but it got his hands on his hips and he's thrusting his crotch yeah. at the viewer and it's like, is that what he's doing? Is that what you're reading into yeah. what he's doing <laughs> there? You yeah. Know? And he'd be like, you can clearly see the genitalia in this person's armpit or whatever, and you're like, I think you're. They made him change like weird things as well, wasn't it? Yeah, and I and I wonder if that's why Batman and Robin got a like that's a what, maid. That's why they got Aunt Harriet. Harriet. Yeah. So it's like, well, they're not gay because they also live with an old yeah. woman. That's why they got Aunt Harriet, and that's why Batman Batwoman exists as yes. well. Yeah. Yeah. Someone for them to kiss potentially. Exactly for sure. Great. And uh, yeah, I wonder how much of it was because I don't know. Like I, I feel like when I when I hear about this sort of stuff, it feels like this book would would have been published in earnest. Well, this is I see some problems in society, but I wonder how much of it was just him. Yeah, being like a scaremonger for money. Like I, I honestly that, no, I, I think no there's idea. a well, there's a lot of parallels to that today. You know, people oh, yeah, being like, sure. you know, immigrants are stealing your jobs and et cetera and so forth, and video games are causing mass shootings, et cetera and so forth. Mm. But uh, you know, and there was like the '80s satanic panic for like oh, Dungeons, yeah, for Dungeons and Dragons, and Dragons. And all yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of shit. This stuff comes around every every once in a while. There's like a new thing, but I think comics aren't. People don't really think about that with comics now because comics are literally every. They cover yeah, every exactly. kind of That's genre true. Yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are things like I remember you mentioning that Marv Wolfman, famous comic book creator. Oh, he one he of the was, words you couldn't say Wolfman. In yeah, you could say Wolfman in a comic book, so his name was not allowed to be. One day he was like, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little, sneaky little credit to me in in yeah. this comic book," and and they're like, "No." And it, yeah, exactly. And it was things like there was a lot of grisly murders in the Batman's, and then it was just all Joker hijinks and things like that because yeah. they changed it. The it Joker- had to be approved by this. This dumb thing. The Joker t- didn't kill anybody in a comic book for like 25 years or something mm. like that because he wasn't, they, they were like, well. And and yeah, and again, you know, the rules were such like, uh, you know, the villains could never win at the end of yeah. a comic book, so they could never really be a two-parter. You can't show authority in a negative light. Yeah, you can't so say, you can't have crime paying off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, Scott uh, Nerdsink did a really interesting video where he breaks down the entire history of it. Let's put it in. Let's put it in. <laughs> but uh, it's really great. I'll link it below. But essentially, it goes for much longer than you think. Yeah, like a right. lot. This, this Comics Code Authority stamp lasted a really, really long time. And by yeah. the end, it was just like one person just kind of reading and approving things. But it but only went through people as like a as a courtesy. Yeah. And then it got to the point where comic creators were just like, fuck this, what are we doing? Yeah, for sure. The, um, I know Alan Moore was like, yeah. I'm doing it. And Stan Lee did a, did a, he, he had a three part Spider Man storyline about drug abuse. Mm. And it, he was basically, and they, and they, is this an alcoholism thing with Tony Stark as well? Would that come up against it? No, I think that was after. Well, yeah. actually. It's in Scott's video. Oh, there you go. That'll, that'll <laughs> I don't come know, up. I don't know but yeah, is. like, I think it was in the 70s and in, in, in he, in, they submitted this story, the comics code, and they're like, we can't. Put, you, we can't, you can't publish this. And Stan Lee was like, well, we're saying drugs are bad. And they're like, yeah, but you can't say drugs or anything. You can't mention drugs. <laughs> you can't, say drugs, or can't say drugs or anything. So he's like, I'll just publish it anyway and see yeah. what happens. And then people are like, oh, this is a good story. It's weird that they would say you can't. Drugs publish. are good as well. That's what he said. He that's what he them. said, yeah. 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 We, I love it. That's right. Um, yeah. He's yes. dead. He got away with it. That's true. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, in a 2012 study... Uh, it was written that Wertham manipulated, overstated, compromised, and fabricated evidence. Shock Especially of all that evidence he attributed to personal clinical research with young people for rhetorical gain. So basically, mm. like a grifter. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was basically like, "Well, I, I, I made the point first, and then I'm going to alt, I'm gonna yeah. tweak the evidence so it supports my point." I think it did, though, to a point. Where, like you mentioned, it did encourage creativity, and it a lot of the things that kind of spun off from that still kind of resonate. Oh yeah, like comics, the the yeah. the fifties. The sort of the late fifties through to the sixties were, you know, just a just a hotbed of weird stuff. Mm. Like I think, you know, it's I think it probably spurred on just a, just a whole new generation of people going, well, like well, we can't have just gangsters and shooting and murders. What else can and we Draculas. do? Draculas. Yeah, mm, fair enough. Let's go. Let's have 
let's have Green Arrow go to a, a planet <laughs> where where everybody's like a hundred feet tall, but there's a hundred foot tall Green Arrow as well. Oh, goodness. Bad, bad storyline. I've read it. It's no good. <laughs> no good. Let's talk about One More Day. Okay. Uh, the Spider-Man story? Yeah. So the devil or Mephisto or a version of the devil, who's to say? makes. I can say definitively he's not the devil. No. But he can he tricks people into thinking he is. Because of his big horns. Yeah, big horns, yeah. Yeah. That's, I can see how people yeah. get confused. And his sort of pinkish face. Mm, pinkish? Mm, pinkish. Ah, see, I, that's when I know that it wasn't, <laughs> right? oh, he wasn't on the level. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. basically, uh, Spider-Man and Mary Jane are forced to make a deal to erase their history together, and they're no longer yeah. married. To save the life of Aunt May. It's not a bad Very comic. Noble. Yeah. Uh, but, it, of course, the controversy behind it was you are erasing these characters' histories. Yes. But, ne- but then you got a single Peter Parker, and that's cool, isn't it? Mm, I think they're back together in a comic book. They are. It's all... It took so many years. It's whatever happened in... Mm-hmm. Is it a good comic though? I don't. I think there's some there's some touching moments in it because they share that last kind of night together and they're reminiscing as their memories are being wiped or something. I didn't like it. Okay, maybe it <laughs> I think it good. sucks. Okay, um, you didn't think it was a touching homage? I thought it sucked. They're, ki- they're kissing and hugging. Sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not against it. I don't Why, care. But, but comic the comic book industry generally seems to be massively against happy marriages. Have you noticed? Yeah. Well, so is society, if you know what I mean. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> One in three or whatever yeah, it is. I don't that's know. right. It's, who knows? Yeah. So there you go. A few more people who should be divorced. Oh, Am I right? Mate, oh uh, Jurassic Star. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard some things. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so do you want to talk about then... Uh, which is called one of the worst Spider-Man stories ever, whether or not this is true. Uh, probably. It's called Sin's Past. Oh, you know I'm, I'm Okay, that, so that story... No. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun for me. I yeah, enjoy I know, this. Right? So that storyline basically was that it was revealed that in the past, uh, Gwen Stacy, who was Peter Parker's girlfriend before Mary Jane... Before he killed her. Who was supposed to be, you know, just, just an amazing young woman, yeah. turned out to have had an affair with... Norman Osborn, the original Green Goblin. She had school at the who, time? Yeah, maybe, probably. Who then killed her later. Well, he killed... Oh, Spider-Man didn't catch her properly, did he? Well, maybe. <laughs> Look, we can all apportion the blame. Let's give it to Gwen Stacy because she's dead and she can't defend herself. And she's not real. Yes. Uh, and basically, they had an affair which resulted in Gwen Stacy giving birth to, to like, evil Green Goblin children. Genetically altered. They yeah. grew really fast or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she, I guess she just returned to... Peter Parker being like, what a weekend I've had. Man, anyway, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah, right? So, and yeah. sort of besmirched the memory of that character. Yeah. People didn't like it. I, I didn't just, like it. No, I just think... I, I, I think it's interesting that you go back and you give depth to a somewhat nothing character. Okay. Because that Gwen Stacy was defined by the fact that Spider-Man killed Ian Kelly. You know, it was... Yeah, no, I know. You, yeah. So, but I it shouldn't have been this is what well, I'm yeah, going to say. Well, yeah, you can do it in a, you do do another, do a do different Do a different version. story in which she's got a... Has a cool backstory that's fun. She rides a motorbike. Rides it, exactly. She's like, well, time to walk home, Peter Parker. I'll see you later. And then she gets the motorcycle out of the bushes. And then she's Fucking a motorcycle daredevil. God. That'd be but fun. I, th- I think now, uh, even though she's from a different dimension or whatever... Oh, Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen is now... What people know her for, I would say, more yeah, than for sure. the fact that she's dead. Mm-hmm. Because whenever and Spider-Man she, killed her. And Spider-Man <laughs> killed her. Because whenever she rolls back in, there was always like, but you're dead. But then she'd be a robot or a clone or a ghost or whatever they used to do. <laughs> yeah. But now she's like back properly and mm. a real character and a cool costume. Hood. Good stuff. Great stuff. Uh, do you want to talk about Green Lantern's girlfriend got stuffed in a fridge? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Is this still fun for you? Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. So uh, Kyle Rayner. Kyle, Kyle Rayner. So the, the what happened was in the nineties. This is post death of Superman. Yeah. So in the death of Superman storyline, Coast City is destroyed, mm. which is Hal Jordan's home city. It's the city he protects. Yeah. Uh, Hal Jordan, the the Green Lantern, and so he goes mad, as you might imagine, because mm. everybody he knows is dead. Yep. Uh, and he turns evil, and he like kills a bunch of. Green Lanterns, and he goes out into space and he destroys the Green Lantern power battery and what have you. And then the last remaining Green Lantern ring is given to just a rando, Kyle Rayner. Yep. And, he's, uh, and, and, and we see a little bit of his like sub- suburban life. He has a girlfriend named Alex, and he's just it's like good times. two issues in, the bad guys realize there's a new guy with the, the Green Lantern ring, and they're like, let's get him. And so they go to his house. Well, they send and by the, him. They mean <laughs> the girl. Yeah. So they go. They send a. They send like an enforcer to to their house. And yeah. Who who kills her and stuffs her in a fridge, basically. Yep. And and, and not even like, just as a distraction, like a momentary yeah. distraction between issues, yes. basically. Yeah. And it uh, it's coined the term fridging. Yeah. So Gail Simone, who we mentioned earlier, yes. she coined that, and I think at, the, I think she mentioned that, and people were like, 
uh, come on, there's no that this no like, and it became an example of like you you create a character solely for the to, heartbreak. Of, yeah, to kill them yeah. so that the hero has a has a someone to cry about. A, it's someone to cry about and a, and a motivation and a motivation mm. to become a better hero, or whatever. And people are like you come on, it's not as common as you'd think. And then she came up with like ninety examples <laughs> of like, yeah, it happens all the time. So yeah. yeah, it's a bit of it's a real cheap device. So now when people use it, there is that kind of like. Can you do something better than this? Yeah, right. Which I think is good. Yeah. So I think ultimately that ended up being a good thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, narratively, I guess there's nothing wrong with. I mean, there probably is. There's, there's easy ways, yeah, but, but like you know, if you kill a if you kill a, a, a beloved character as yeah. m- as motivation or you know in an important. Yeah, there's ways to do it. There's ways to do it, but it's you know it's if you know if if Lois Lane is killed or so, or you know Tony Stark mm. is killed. Uh, which would encourage people to be more heroic. Iron, more Iron Man's. More Iron Man's. Mm. That's, you know, because we've had enough time with those characters. Yeah. We've, not we've just actually, like two, two we have issues. a personal bond with those yeah. characters, not just two issues of like, hey, I'll, I'm off to do some uh, crime fighting, I'll did, see you later. How did Green Lantern, the original guy, yes. well, not the original original, you know what I mean? Hal Jordan. How did he come back from being evil? Oh, it turned out he wasn't really evil, it was a space bug. Right. His ear to go in his ear. It might have gone in his ear, yeah. But so he, when he became evil, he took the name Parallax. So he took all the Green Lantern. Ah, he took all the Green Lantern. Is that Lan- the first Parallax? Yes. Really? So he took all the Green Lantern. Big Lan- face. Oh, in it's the in movie. The, in the movie, it's a. Okay, so it, right, yeah. Okay, so so this is pre the movie. Yes. But basically, he turned into. He had all the Green Lantern energy, so he's sort of omnipotent. Mm. And then he was like, "I'm going off to space." And then he he wanted to eventually use his powers to bring Coast City back. But then it turned out, all you know, all the ends justify the means, and he was too evil, and blah blah blah. Yes, and you know, it was kind of. I think it was initially meant to be okay. Well, we're done with Hal Jordan, and, and we want the new guy to be the new. But people didn't see. Didn't people didn't really didn't like Kyle Rayner initially, and I think they were like, well, people like Hal Jordan. Let's bring Hal Jordan back. So what can we do? Let's say he wasn't evil and he wasn't driven mad. It was a space bug, yeah, or cool. parallax, which is yellow. It's a yellow space bug. Mm, that that's why. That's parallax. why Green Lantern rings don't don't, don't work like against yellow. yellow. Yeah, because parallax. Wait, didn't that work prior? Didn't that, was that a thing prior to that though? Yes, it was. But they retconned it. Yeah, great. Cool. This is all good. It's good stuff, work. right? It's comic books. Okay. You know what I mean? I think I've got one more here. I'm ready to hear um, about it. Which, but of course, if you have any more, Mason, just yell them at me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the death of Jason Todd. Yeah. Uh, I was, I think I remember when we talked about in this past that I thought they were going to kill him anyway. Like they were just going to do it regardless. Oh yeah, yeah. But apparently the but official the, method. the vote. So you'd write in and no, you'd, you'd call in, call in. Sorry, and you got they got like ten and a half thousand votes, and it was a seventy-two vote margin for death. Of. Right. And yeah. so for people who don't know, Jason, oh, yeah. Yeah. Jason Todd was the second Robin. So Dick Grayson he the stole one. the wheels off the bat. Yeah, Dick Grayson was the one, the, the original classic Robin. He's the one in the TV series. He's, he's Chris O'Donnell, obviously, in the Batman You movies. all know that, though. Uh, you know Chris O'Donnell. And then O'Donnell. he then he moved on, and then we repla- he was replaced by Jason Todd, who was less of a goody two-shoes and kind of like a more rebellious... More of a character. goody poo-shoes. Thank you. And, and people didn't like him as much. Um... Because he was different. Because he was different, but not even that different, to be honest. No. Like his origin originally was exactly the same. Mm. He was he was a circus acrobat whose parents were killed. Wow, how did they come up with that? I don't know. But <laughs> then they then they when Crisis on Infinite Earths happened, which we mentioned earlier. Yes. They changed his his origin, so he was like a like a a, a street a street, orphan, street cool tough. kid. Yeah. Yeah, and so. Because people didn't like him, they were like, "Well, we'll make this story called the Death in the Family, in which mm. at the end." Uh, there'll be a sort of a cliffhanger. Does he live or does he die? Call this number to determine whether he will live or die or yes. not. And in the the trade paperback, the, the the one I have for Death in the Family, there's like a little editorial note at the front. And whoever was in the editor involved in that said, "I have two copies of the next issue in my drawer. One in which he lives, and one in which he dies." Mm. And then it, then he had to go with the one in which he dies. But I've never seen the other one, so I don't know if that really exists. So did he say he had it, or did he show? No, he doesn't show. It's it's in text yeah. form. He's just okay. like, yeah, I had two copies in the drawer, and I'm like, did you? Mm. Did you though? Well, he said he did. Yeah, it's You're asking me, I don't know. Did yeah, he? It's true. Do you well, think he did? I, it it seems weird that if it did exist, we haven't seen it at all. Like yeah. surely it'd be in. It'd be worth a lot. It'd be in a. Tr- it'd be in the trade at this point. Like it'd be in the new version. They'd be like, here's yeah. the issue when he lives. Or at <laughs> Skip least to this like, version, if you want a happy ending. It'd be a guy on Twitter be like, look what I have. That's true. <laughs> yes. So you know, I I bought this desk from DC many years ago. It. But of course, Jason Todd didn't stay dead because nobody no. does. But that also he stayed dead for a really long time. He though. did more that, more than well, most uh, people. Yeah, do. that's true. Up until Red Hood. Yeah, uh, which is a good story. Yeah. So I think again, I don't have a problem with 
killing Jason Todd. I just no. think it's a it was you know again it was a controversial thing at the time. Mm-hmm. But I think the Red Hood story that spun off with it, and then that character and how it's informed, like other, like I think the animated movie is like maybe my favorite there you animated go, yeah. movie, and he's of course in the Arkham Knight game. Yeah, that's true. Because spoiler alert, he's the Arkham he's Knight. He's an Arkham Knight. Yep. Uh, also, I f- it might have been that point also when they were kind of trying phasing out, but like it was a point where they're like, well, Batman should be a loner. Yeah, and right. he's more kind of like you know because remember the, in the movie he's a loner you know in the yeah, eighty nine he's a loner so we gotta and and Robin's too colourful and blah 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 so they you know mm. they turfed him blew him up and good probably or bad yeah whatever you think mm-hmm. do you think Batman has too many bat families I like, every now I, like, and then, I like his bat family mm. but every now and then now and then he's like it's just me I don't want to I don't want any help from anybody yeah. mm-hmm. but then there's like eighty people be like what are you paying us for then <laughs> you, you paying us a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, I well, there's obviously more, oh my God, but uh, that's more. my list that I've got. You've got a good list. Thank you. Mm. Um, if you've got any, tweet at us. Tweet at us your favourite controversial comic book decision. If you do have that mm. copy of the of uh, Death in the Family, where we Jason Todd lives, yeah, send it to us. If there's only one copy in the world, send it to us. Yeah, we want it. We want it. I want it specifically. Okay, James wants it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, do you know what it's time for? Uh, is it time for what we're reading? What are we going to read? Yes. I'm doing a thing. What are we reading today? James, what have you been reading? Well, I, can't, I can't think of a darn thing that I've well, been reading. Well, I've got a couple of things. Okay. Uh, I was in Ballarat. The new season of The Chef Show is up. Yes, it is. I've not, <laughs> I've, not, I've not read that yet. Yeah, huh? I haven't finished the first season, but oh. uh, I was in Ballarat for the weekend for a, for a birthday. So you were reading Ballarat Street Signs? Well, I was outside of Ballarat and I didn't have any reception, so I couldn't access any internet, which turns out is still terrible. I thought maybe this is good for me, but I'm like, actually, you know what? I don't like it. I don't this like at it all. at all. Yeah. <laughs> like cutting off one of my arms. I did sit outside in the, in the bush with a cup of tea and I went, yeah, this is all right for a minute, sure. <laughs> right. But what am I going to watch when I go back inside? Yeah, what am I going to do? Read these tea leaves? Anyway, what I watched. My Nostradamus. <laughs> I watched uh, local wind TV, which is nine. Yep. And I watched Crocodile Dundee 2 because it was the only thing on that was tolerable. Which one's Crocodile Dundee 2? The one where he starts in New York, but then there's gangsters, oh, yeah. so he lures them to the outback mm-hmm. and then beats them up. <laughs> Probably could have done that in America. No, because he had all his outback shit out there. Oh, good point. What I love about... All his deadly the, traps. The Crocodile Dundee movies are... Uh, there's such massive vanity projects for yeah, Paul Yeah, for Hogan. sure, yeah, yeah. The first one and second one... Uh, people hate the second one, but I think they're both about the same... Of, in terms wow, of this is a real Jurassic World yeah. situation. But uh, th- the third one is atrocious. The one where he goes to Los Angeles yeah, and right. whatever. But it's just, uh, I mean, what, what do you, what do you, what do you say about Crocodile Dundee too, Mason? You That's know what true, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you should say more things about. What's the highlight? Is there another? Is there an abs- Is there an exact parallel to that's not a knife? This there's is a bit knife. where guys Does like somebody have a bigger knife. Guys like, what are your odds of getting out of here with that jacket? And he throws the knife and it goes into the guy's mohawk. And he's like, oh, yeah. oh better than average. He's oh, an I remember bloke. that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but also, he's what's better, Crocodile Dundee two or Reckless Kelly? <laughs> I haven't seen Reckless, Reckless Kelly, Kelly of, in a hundred years. Does, do people know about Yahoo Serious? There's your action item. Who in America remembers Yahoo Serious? What's he up to these days? I think he quit the business because he did Mister Accident in the early two yeah. thousands. Yahoo Serious was this guy, and he created these weird, like parody characters. Cas- Historical anachronism. He's 66. Wow. He created these weird historical anachronism movies. Young Einstein. Yep. Where he was like a guy from Tasmania who invented rock and roll. Yep. And then he went to an insane asylum. Yep. And he got elected. He split an atom with a chisel and hammer. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And invented rock and roll. And invented rock and roll. And then he was re- then he was Reckless Kelly, who was like a descendant of the original Ned Kelly. Yep. But again, he goes to LA. Goes to LA for, yeah. to be in movies. Yeah. Which is a also trash the, can on his head. Which, and then, which is also the plot of Crocodile Dundee yeah, 3. Yeah. Was a stunt and then he was in Mr. Man. Accident, which nobody's seen. Yeah, which is in the year 2000. There you go. Wow. Yeah, so good on him. <laughs> Reckless Kelly. Anyway, I'm going to watch Reckless Kelly. <laughs> no, you're That's not. That's not true. Uh, this week I watched... Uh, Hugo Weaving's in it. Is he? He's the villain. He's the English villain. Nice. Because he sells... Reckless Kelly's Island to the Japanese and they try to tow it away oh, or something. Okay, right, right. Okay. Australian cinema folks. Yeah. People wonder why the Australian entertainment it's industry's never been dying. good. No, it's <laughs> nah, there's some there's some gems in there. Um uh, well look, a, a couple of previews for upcoming caravans of garbage. Mm. Uh, I did watch uh, Disney's Mulan this week. Oh yeah. yeah and I'm very interested to know what you think yeah. about that. Oh look, uh, Disney's Mulan, I watched that. Mm. I watched a Star Trek 
So if you can guess which one it is. It's coming up. And uh, and A Quiet Place. Yes. So, yeah. What do you know, think of A Quiet Place? Still good. Still good. I mean, there's some... Cr- there's Living some near the waterfall. Well, exactly. Mm. Why, didn't the, why didn't the bloody... Why didn't the government figure out they're vulnerable to sound? Exactly. I don't know. We'll mm. talk about it. Yeah. But not now. There's no time. Why didn't they make the whole house out of a black box? Exactly. Mm. Anyway, uh, that's Makes cool. Makes think. Oh, I'm probably going to read uh, Machine Man 2020. Oh, yeah, it's back. Because that's because uh, it's, it's the year 2020. Because Machine, you know, originally Machine Man, mm. when he was a, a serious action Marvel character, uh, he was teleported into the far flung future of 2020. Oh and he had some serious adventures. But now he's he's just a chainsaw wielding lunatic. He's mostly so. just trolling people on Twitter, actually. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He so was also in that Marvel Zombies one where he killed all the zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's That might be my favorite Marvel yeah, Zombies. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so that it's a, basically good. an issue where he just goes into the Marvel Zombies universe and kills everybody. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. So I'll probably read that, mm. and I should also read uh, Iron Man twenty twenty, which I haven't read yet. But I also uh, haven't read that. Man, let's do it together. Isn't it not on page a, by it's page? A different Tony it's Arno Stark. Stark. Yeah, that's Arno right. Stark, yeah. yeah, do I have to read all the other shit? No, it'll to be it? fine. Okay, There'll good. be a recap page. Great. Don't even worry about. Also, it's it. the first issue of Tom Taylor and Carl Moore and Mosert's um, DC deceased unkillables. Oh. So it's the villains. Who yep. get the it's it's Marvel zombies, but DC zombies. Yes, exactly and right. It's yes, set parallel to the other story uh-huh. which just finished up, and it's focused on uh, a bunch of DC villains, and it's still good. Go. It's a good comic. Oh, there's a there's a also also there's a comic book called Tartarus that I was going to read this mm. week, which I will don't know anything about it. I know it's sci-fi, and apparently it's really good. Tartarus. Tartarus, I think, is what it's called. I'll write that down. Sci-fi comics. All right, then you know we have to do the letters then. Don't yeah, we? let me just double check that. Tartarus. 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 Like Tartarus. All right, steady on, steady yeah. on, buddy. Come on, mate. It's a god or something? Greek mythology god? It That's might an be. image comic. Yes. Oh, it's with uh, with all, a sci-fi drama of Breaking, uh, but all the drama of Breaking Bad set in Mos Eisley. Oh, okay then. Well, good on me for finding a great, great series to start. I agree. Thank, Thank you. you. Come up with that by yourself. I probably didn't. I think I saw it on the Serious Issues uh, mm, uh, Facebook group. So very that's probably, good. that's probably why. Anyway, should we do another segment? We should. What do you think it should be? I think it should be Letters. I agree. The classic one was Letters, oh Letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do Letters. This better be a very long comic that I just bought because it's six bucks. Which one? Tartarus. Oh, you bought it? Okay, cool. Yeah, I just bought it. Let me know what it's like. <laughs> oh, well, I thought you were reading. No, I thought we were going to read it together. Oh, right, we'll read it together. We'll read it page nah. by page. Honestly, I don't mind how long it is. If it's good, I don't care. Nice. Yeah. Letters. It's letters. It's and letters, right? Of course, right? if you do want to reach the show, hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter. Or weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Also, I should have mentioned this before, but it, I'm trying to do more Patreon stuff. Patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if you want to contribute to topics and caravan of garbages, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, yeah. What do you got? Or what have I got? Well, look, we have a lot of opinions on Olive Garden. Mm. I cannot possibly go through all of them. We, we mentioned Olive Garden last week because we're unfamiliar with the, the, the franchise that is Olive Garden, but we got it, it ran the gamut. This is Sean Mackey. He says, Olive Garden is to Italian food as Taco Bell is to Mexican food. Nothing like the real thing, but great if you hate your body. Their breadsticks cool. are lit. I've heard about that. I think that's just then to get you f- filled up on bread. Yeah, for sure. 100%. The sons of bitches. Mm. Yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna I'm gonna check real quick to see how many emails we got about Olive Garden. I know we got many a tweet. A lot of people are just like it's not very good, uh, but you just you can just eat it if you want to eat it. We got ten emails. It's pretty Olive good Garden. and a lot of tweets. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, this is Ian Hornbaker. Just ate at Olive Garden. Dot dot dot. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he says, uh, right after my wife and I left Olive Garden, I put on your podcast and the segment where you talked about Sonic and Olive Garden came on. Uh, I, I've been to Olive Garden on numerous occasions. I know I'm in the minority, but I dread whenever we go to Olive Garden. What we only it? went this time because my wife got a gift card. I was going to say, why go? Yeah. I guess it might be. What are we? What, we used to have I, probably the sanity gift card. You know, so, uh, you know society. That no one wants. Yeah, like there's a certain th- every I, I feel every society has a certain gift thing. Yeah. That if you don't know anything anything about someone, you just go here's here's this. Yes. And in Australia, for a long time, it was Sanity, which is a was a music shop. It was like overpriced and quite generic. Yeah. Uh, but you just buy somebody just a Sanity had, voucher. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And it was enough. It was always it was always enough to buy like one album. Yeah. Mm. Or not, or slightly under what you yeah. need. Uh, we only went this time because my wife got a gift card. It absolutely sucks. 
Uh, <laughs> even after the 25 gift card, we still spent way more than I would have on that meal. Don't waste your time. No problem. Yeah. Wasn't going to. But mm. that's confirmed all my uh, suspicions. I've done the endless pasta on one occasion. I ended up eating three bowls. I was stuffed but still didn't feel like I got my money's worth. <laughs> so that's a... If it's not good. Yeah. Okay. That's because they fill you up on breadsticks before your meal. I knew arrives. it. Sizzler yeah. do the same thing with their bread, mm. their cheesy bread. Yeah. i got a friend who goes to, when he does the all, all you can eat stuff, he works out exactly what the most expensive thing is and yeah. he eats exclusively that amount of thing mm. until it covers the cost of like <laughs> how much he paid. And, and the and petrol then he'll, to get there. Yeah, and then he'll go and eat other things. I'm like, yeah, but right. don't you just want to eat the things that you like? Mm. Like it's not like, this from it's De- a weird grift. That is, yeah. <laughs> this is from Derek. I think you mentioned this off air earlier. Paul Rudd's chubby hands. Yeah, I saw that time. I didn't see the. After re watching Endgame, I've realized how chubby Paul Rudd's hands are. And it is out. bothering me. I mean, look at that fat oven mitten of a hand. <laughs> anyway, do you guys have any hot tips regarding hand shrinking so I can harass him on Twitter about it? I don't think he's on Twitter. No, he wouldn't be. Yeah, I think he's one of those guys who's not on social media. Um, but look, anything to, to denigrate. The, the the too good Paul Rudd, do you know what I mean? He's got he's got he's got too much hands. I don't know about this. Yeah, maybe it's a certain angle. Mm. Look, I don't know. Can have to check it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know uh, Desmond Llewellyn from um, from the James Bonding podcast. They're constantly referencing how huge and inflatable his hands. Oh, look really? Okay, movies. yeah, yeah. It's a great podcast. Mm. Um, I've got a tweet here from yes. Papa Kulak. Giuseppe? Oh, yes. Wow. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. What uh, do you boys think about Spaceballs? Need a commentary. Um, I've seen it once and I, I thought loved it was at the time. fine. I had the novelization of Spaceballs. <laughs> oh, I bet those jokes really translate. I don't know. <laughs> I've got no idea. I haven't seen it since I was 10 probably. I, think I, I saw know. it in like 97. So yeah, it was right. well after and I'm like, I'm okay. not, the, I yeah. don't like. It's got Rick Moranis much. in it. It's I know. coming back. It's coming back, which is cool. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, you know. I think I also saw it after Independence Day, so I'm like, that's the present of Independence Day. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, and, you know, it's it. a good cast, and John yeah. Candy's in it. And mm-hmm. Yeah, there's good jokes in it, though, isn't there? Nice I like bit. the fact that they're filming it, and then they're in the thing, they're in the thing, and then the giant vacuum, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Combing the desert. It's probably yeah, all right. I, remember. I don't know. Look, I have no idea. Maybe we could do it for a caravan. Parody. Can, yeah. Caravan of garbage. Maybe, yeah. Parody films are very hit and miss, but I feel yeah. um, he's pretty good in general, I would say. He's Mel Brooks. Films. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sure. Yeah, you, you yeah. do agree? Mel the Brooks is pretty the, good. The master of the genre. Yeah, he's pretty pretty good at yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah. agree with that? Yeah. yeah. But I also feel like th- those do exist in that sort of Zucker Brothers era of comedy where it's like, totally. hey, we're combing the desert for those droids and then it cuts to the stormtroopers and they've literally got a giant comb or whatever. And you're like, I, I get it. Like it's, I think like if you're, you're in the frame of mind to enjoy that, yeah. it's going to be funny. I think like your but. medical... Hospital, whatever that shows, medical police. Oh, that yes. kind of covers that kind of for sure. Know, yeah, yeah, now, yeah. And um, Angie Tribeca. I was just thinking Angie Tribeca. Yeah, yeah with uh, with what's her face? Mm. Angie Tribeca. Rashida Jones. Yes, yes. correct. Yes. Mm-hmm. Here's a question. I'm ready. It's from Jim Saxon. It just says, "Has the Last Jedi aged well?" Yeah, I think it's since the last one. Yeah, a lot of people, even who didn't like it, and this is probably a generalization, are like, "Well, I still don't like it, but at least it <laughs> it wasn't the Rise of Skywalker, <laughs> yeah. right?" Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, I think it, I think it looks better in comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, if know, a lot of people don't like it, and that's fine. I feel like most people. I say that I, I feel like most people have stopped talking about the rise of Skywalker, but then occasionally, like in that that sort of search tab in Twitter, like I'll check that, and the, I always scroll past, and there's like Star Wars. There's people con- the or the Raylos, all these people constantly yeah. just they're they're going to argue about this stuff for the rest of their lives. Can't wait. I say good on them. I say good on them. Have a good fun that's hobby. Passion. That's what I say. You got another email there? Yeah, this is from Jordan. Hello, Jordan. Uh, I figure you guys have heard of it, but have you ever seen the 2005 Man Thing telly movie, or heard no. about, or heard about the decision it, yes. to change from its initial plans to be released in theaters to be released as a sci-fi original because of Marvel's poor financial performance and it being reportedly so bad that test audiences left before it was over. <laughs> I didn't know about this at all. I've never heard. I know of what this. it is. I've never uh-huh. seen it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can get it. It's out there. I bet it is. Yeah. yeah. What an odd choice for. 2005. It's I guess this whatever was, you got. Yeah, this is yeah, this is pre this is pre Marvel Renaissance. This is yeah. pre Iron Man. So I guess they were like, we are really running thin on characters. Thirty million budget. That's yeah. decent. It's not nothing. Yeah. But it made one point one million. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh no. It's an Australian American horror film. Oh, who's in it? Richard Droxborough? Uh no, but it's produced by Avi Arid. Okay. Because you know. Yeah, Marvel. Marvel back in the day. Uh, I don't know any of th- Rachel Taylor. There's a name I know. Jack Thompson. Oh, Rachel okay. Taylor's um in uh, um Jessica Jones. Yes, she is. She's um Wildcat. Wildcat. Yeah. Wildcat. 
Yeah, okay, sure. one of the cats. Alex O'Loughlin, I know him. Personally? No. Uh. Yeah, you know Jack Thompson, obviously. Yeah, yeah, of course. He was in Broken Arrow. And he was also in that porn magazine or whatever. Playgirl. He was in Playgirl. Was Playgirl. <laughs> or was it Cleo? That, poor ma- that no, porn magazine. it was Cleo. I don't know. I don't actually know. have no idea. Cool. Great stuff. Uh, yeah, we could probably look at that at some point. Yeah. We've got an endless list of things to go to. That's true. Um, I've got one more here, or do I? No, nope, I don't. That's it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> do you have any no, more? I've got one more. This is from Helen Dryer. Oh, no, I do have one more. Sorry. Okay. This is You Are All The Goats. Yay! Uh, this is uh, Hello, James and Mesa from Washington, D.C. Just wanted to email and say that I appreciate all the work you guys do with this podcast and with the Mr. Sunday Movies channel and all the outreach outreach that you and Claire do. I nearly said outrage. We've got some outrage. But <laughs> uh, all the outreach that you and Claire do. And mostly the listeners. I think that thing didn't go out this week as well. I think they're still sort of Oh, the chat, the yeah, yeah, Q&A. Okay. Out, we'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Why we, we I mean them. Yeah. They'll figure it out. Their problem. They said they could yeah. do it. <laughs> uh, she says, you all have no idea how helpful your podcast is to me and everything I've gone through in the past year. Well, oh, you're welcome. Sorry to hear that. And thank you. Yeah, I hope, you know, you're, I hope, I hope you're doing great now. So that's good. Yeah. I listen to your podcast in the morning before class and work. Uh, I work part-time as an animal hospital as a tech and an assistant. Cool. There you go. Yes. Very good. Yeah. It's a very kind email. I think so too. Mason, this is a question directed for both of us from Jan the War, B- War Boy on uh, Twitter. It says, Sincerely, Helena. It says Helen in the top. Don't know, who to, don't know what to believe. What do we do? Yeah, I don't know. What do we do? I'll just edit it just out. Just quit the podcast. Just, just no, we'll just quit the podcast. Okay, okay yeah, yeah, all right. Quit the podcast. Jan the War Boy says, Do you guys play any fighting games? Tekken got brought up last week and I got excited. Cheers, <laughs> big ears. Um, yeah, I played a little bit of Tekken. I, got, I bought one of the Tekken games on... PSP, which oh, one? Yeah. Who's to say? Whatever <laughs> one was on that. Probably Tekken Tag Tournament. Yeah, so I remember Tekken from the 90s. I'm like, oh my God, 3D environments and whatever. Uh huh. Do a big up kick and then you bring your oh, yeah. foot down or whatever. Uh, look, I've, I've played most, I'm, I'm, I've am I'm played most of the fighting game franchises, but mm. I'm sure I'm, I'm many games behind. You know, I started on Street Fighter 2. What's your jam though? What's the one that you kind of mesh with? Because I feel like I've never got the rhythm of Street Fighter. Uh, okay, yeah. look, my I mean, my I think ultimately when I play, still played video games in arcades, my favourite franchise was probably the Marvel Capcom yeah, right. game. I've seen you play that. Yeah, because yeah, there was, you know, there was X-Men versus Street Fighter yeah. and and Marvel versus Capcom and then, but they've gotten, I don't know, they've, 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 fi- they've sort of moved away from like the Street Fighter Alpha cartoony yeah. version to this weird rotoscoped yeah, kind of thing, and I don't, I don't like Cell it. Cell shaded, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I don't know. I, I. Do you prefer like the two D sprites? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah okay, but you I don't can know. still get a bit. Of, they still make games like that. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, and they released Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite a couple of years ago, which I think was. I don't mean it's great to. See, it's always great to see new, especially Marvel characters. Yeah. In, in those games, you just be like, oh, Doctor Strange. What's he? What's he about oh, in this? Oh, too. lasers. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, I got the Marvel Ultimate Capcom something whatever on Vita. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Played that for a little bit, and I'm yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of big lasers in this. Oh boy! But I don't think I ever, I didn't play yeah. it that much. But I more gel with the Mortal Kombat Injustice style. Yeah, fighting right. Uh-huh. Games. Yeah. Also, really like Dragon Ball Z Budokai Three. I remember that one. <laughs> very specific. I'm really very specifically good at that game. But not the new one. You don't no, care for I, it. no, no. I like the new one. No, okay. not the new new one where yes. it's also in a RPG 3D one. RPG. There was one before that which okay. was I quite yep. liked. But that one in particular, you remember that I played like that to death. Yes. We broke a couple of controllers. I broke two of your controllers, I think, with that game, yeah. <laughs> you owe me money. I know. Uh, <laughs> that's a great game. And they're vintage now. They're this is going to be really difficult. I, yeah, I, I like the Mortal Kombat games as well, but I have not played 11 yet. I'm kind of no, waiting. I'm, I'm waiting, waiting for waiting the definitive. The Platinum Edition, the Game of the Year Edition, yeah, whatever. And then I'll get it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to download extra stuff. Just give no. me the Terminator on a disc. Mm. It's fine. Exactly. Uh, and that, I believe, is as they, as they say. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the Who's show. they? Oh. Us. That's what, that's what we say. Bring us to the end of the show. James. Yeah. I'm going to say some things for the end button? of the show. No. no don't, oh, my God. He <laughs> pushed it so willy-nilly. <laughs> you don't know what that was going to do. And could he have pushed been it. the self-destruct button. It could um, have been an eject button. We all get shot out of the room. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, most of this shit does on this thing. I know oh, this well, does. that's not surprising. Hey. <laughs> That one makes music. Wow. <laughs> Did you program that in or was that? Of course I didn't. There's a laugh track on here somewhere. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That's good. What do you got? That was good because it was like the audience were laughing at the idea. <laughs> There'd be a laugh track. That's quite fun. Thank you. Uh, and thank you everybody for listening and uh, subscribing and telling a friend and giving us a nice review. If you have a chance, James, do you have a nice review in there somewhere? We've got a couple here. Uh, oh, we yeah. mentioned last week that like you got a friend to shout out or insult. Oh, we'll yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is from... Uh, 
handsome fox with sweet lips, which oh, yeah. seems to become a recurring thing. There was one on Reddit. Did you see that picture of that handsome fox? Yeah, I did, fox? yeah. Uh-huh. My goodness. Yes. <laughs> so uh, it says, review about a great friend, Burke Flat. Burke Flat. Bloke Fart Plus is a real friend of mine, and I mean a real life one. Great guy, real great. And this is from Flips McGee, who says, Real good stuff needs more flips. Uh, these are both five <laughs> well, stars. He would say that, wouldn't he? <laughs> but I say, Flips McGee, why do you want the competition? Well, this is actually directed specifically at you. Okay. By the way, you can just do this in app, it really helps the show. Yeah. Been listening for years, not sure how these guys have been doing basically the same thing for years and still making me laugh out loud. <laughs> yeah. Fair point. Our only thing to make uh, it better is if Meso could do a flip. Brackets. I'm pretty sure he can't. All right, here we go. You ready? Right. You ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. All right. Bearing in mind, I'm going to do a really funny flip. So when I achieve the flip, okay. everybody in the room is going to laugh. I okay, reckon. cool. Hup! It's cheers, Meso. Oh, it's the video. It went beyond laughter. Wow. wow. There you go. Good bit. Is it? No. What else is happening? Review the show, please. Oh, yes. Helps. If you could, that would be yeah. very nice. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at Gmail, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go to planetbroadcasting.com. You can sign up to our newsletter from the great Rob Collins. Oh He's goodness. the Weekly Planet on Twitter. On Twitter, I'm Wikipedia Brown, and on Instagram, I'm Nick Maso, N I C K M A S E A U. We've been putting up some photos from the live show. It's been yeah. a good, good, fun Some's time. You're Mr. Sunday Movies on all the media platforms. Yeah. you not? Yes. Uh, you can also go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group uh, if you want to have some fun discussions about all kinds of pop culture stuff. The Weekly Planet you wanna, Reddit. You want to see you want exactly you want to see all kinds of scoops, yeah, and, and footage and set photos and oh all sorts God. of stuff. They, they show up there first. You can then we have some fun fun chats about them. We Real do. Nice. We certainly yeah. do. Um, um, uh, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. If you want to chuck in a buck, we would appreciate that very much. Give us one buck. Um, if you would like, you can also go to the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and buy some graphic novels. What do you want to buy? It's all, the, all the crap things all we the mentioned. the crap we talked about. All the crap. You're like, I want to read about that crap series. It's in the shape of a big box of crap. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. In the new, new 50, it's got 52 stamped in it. You know, <laughs> just squelched in it. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. We've got some T-shirts on Public. We do. Uh, that's uh, um, How much money do we get? Not much, probably. Who knows? Just search for the Weekly Planet. Yeah. We do have the AUSB cassettes. Yes. Uh, however, the, uh, the the gentleman responsible is, uh, is I believe... Uh, having In some jail. surgery recently, is, is, so there might be some delay there. Yes. So, uh, But if you order him, he'll make him. Yeah, that's right. Unless he yeah, dies. But, well, but I say best of luck to him. Yeah, I don't me think too. He will. No, no, <laughs> I, don't, I didn't think. I didn't. I don't think he's gonna die. Mm, yeah, I'm yeah. saying if they don't get to you, it's because he's dead. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, uh, best of luck to him. <laughs> I'm sure he's gonna pull through. I think he's gonna be great. Me too. Yes. Mm. Um, and that's the whole show, I reckon. Next week, Invisible Man. Oh, Guess who didn't get a chance to interview Lee Winnell this time? Either Thinks of he's us? too good for the for this wow, podcast now. Oh Wow. I think I can tell you who the new bloody Invisible Man. Is to us, it's Lee Winnell. Correct. He's not there in the room. Yeah. He gets stuffed as far as I'm concerned. That being said, yeah. uh, I'm really looking forward to this genuinely. Yeah, me too. And don't watch any of the trailers if you haven't. That's right. Just watch The Invisible Man, the movie. Yeah. So we'll be back to talk, talk the new dark universe. Oh, it's gonna, this is it for sure. Kicking off. 100%. And of course, we're doing The Third Mummy. That's wrapping up this I week, isn't ju- it? Just give us a give us a low budget dark universe. Give it like that's it's well, a... It's yeah, the invisible well, maybe this is what it is. Well, how about the low budget... Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> just a guy in a Frankenstein mask and he's a murderer. Yeah, that's cool. It's just a bunch of murderers and hanging out. And when Robert De Niro was Frankenstein, was monster, because, you know, you got to say that. No? In, Kenneth Branagh did a version in the early 90s. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I remember when Jack Nicholson was a wolf man? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Barely, yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, that's the show, I reckon. That's the show. Uh, grab that show, you guys. We'll see you next week. And goodbye. Or maybe we won't see you next week. I'm oh, Invisible Man. Invisible Man. Mm. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, guys. We really appreciate <laughs> right. it. It's always nice to have a live audience. Yeah, no, get out. Yeah, yeah. Get Fuck out. off, seriously. Yeah, get out of here. Come on. I mean, one round of applause would be. <laughs> but get out. Get yeah, the fuck seriously out. Get out. Seriously, get out of our phones. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want, it's up to you.